All right, uh, 914-338-1885. It's in the room on the VOC Nation radio network. Uh, we are live and we are on the air at VOCNation.com as I close all these extra windows that seem to have uh, popped up here on my display. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, welcome back. I'm excited to be here, joined once again by the lovely Kathy Fitz. What's going on, Kathy? Not much, Brady. Just shoveling yeah. my little heart out. You're just what? Shoveling. Shoveling your little. I got you. Well, my little heart out. it sucks, don't it? All righty then. Yep. Uh, also joining us, the one and only maestro of professional wrestling, Papa Stro. How you doing, my friend? Oh, great can, to be here. I, there you go. Stay warm. <laughs> it's been horrible. <laughs> Absolutely horrible, but uh, <laughs> things are fixing to get a lot better. It's the highlight of the week right now. Uh, also, uh, <coughs> Maniac Matt Grimm on the line. Matt, I was surprised you actually uh, said that you liked the WWE pay-per-view. It was uh, refreshing, for sure. Uh, not just to yeah, hear you do right. it, but, you know, the fact that it was good. Hey, it was it, it was better than watchable, which for them is uh, is a bit of a tall order at times. But they pulled it off this time. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, actually, we joined in us a little early. We also have uh, Ray Bogus. Ray, what's going on, dude? Hello, men and Miss Fitzpatrick. I'm with Matt. That was actually a Hello. fairly... I don't want to say it, it, it's it's. I mean, it's not it's not going to go down as one of the all time great rumbles for some reasons that weren't even necessarily in their control. But right, you know, if you watched that, you, you didn't feel like you could have done something better with your evening. You felt okay. Yeah, I mean, I I was on board with it. I was. Um, I, I'll tell you what, it did strike me as odd. Uh, I thought the women went above and beyond. I, I thought that they were incredible. Uh, but it really hit me how young the women's division is and how the focus is on youth and, like, you know, what's coming up. And for the men, uh, Matt, they're <laughs> 40-year-old guys going at it, you know? <laughs> they're our age. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, you know, I, I think both divisions have problems that are long-term problems that are in front of them. I think – the short version of this is that the women, they need to find a way to establish characters outside of Charlotte Flair and Bailey, and they need to find a way to actually create characters that are interesting because the talent is there, but the interest in the characters is not. Um, that needs to get fixed. And with the men, it's just as you said. I mean, like you had Mustafa Ali earlier on in the night talking about how guys like edge of the past and they take spots from younger guys like him. But, yeah. Like, and I know he's a heel, but like I legitimately did not care one way or another when, when people like him are eliminated because the company has spent years defining these people down to a level where it feels like, no, you're, you're at a level where if you're lucky, you'll maybe win the U S title someday or the intercontinental belt and you'll have it for two months and then it'll be off of you and you'll never sniff anything again. Yeah. And that's just kind of the, like, yeah. Like when edge won, going into it, I was like, who's going to win this tonight? Like it does, right. nothing really seems to make sense. It didn't feel, it felt like it was a year too early for Big E to win it. And, and who knows if we'll even be talking about him next year at the rate that, you know, with these <laughs> issues that we're talking about, but He'll crash and burn. Um, it's a shame. Yeah, and then when Edge when Edge won, I was like, and my immediate reaction was like, that's awesome. And now, well, you know, and I'm still thinking that's awesome, but that's part of the problem. Like, I can't think of anybody else in that match who I would have been more excited to see win it. Um, it here's what I think: uh, why it worked, and I'm curious what you guys think, and and not just you guys like the panel, but. You guys at large as well, I'm going to invite you to call in. 914-338-1885 is the call-in number if you want to check in tonight. And like I said, we'd love to talk with you. This is supposed to be the most exciting time of the year for wrestling between the Royal Rumble 
and WrestleMania, you know, it's, it's, it's supposed to be that good and, and that captivating and that exciting. Uh, here's where it worked, Kathy. I, I think it worked uh, because they went back to what they know worked. You know, you're able to insert an edge in there. You know, you put edge in there. And obviously, regardless of the limitations that he's going to have, the people are excited to have him back. You know, it was a, a very nostalgic kind of show in a lot of ways, uh, you know, between Edge and then, of course, you had Goldberg. But you've got two very strong champions, you know. And right now, the best thing you can do is come up with compelling matches for each of them. And I, I really like the way things are headed, especially Stro, if they go the way of Edge and Roman Reigns, which is what they're talking about. Well, um, with uh, Edge winning the Rumble, I, I, honestly, that would be the only match I would be invested in watching would be him and Reigns, because I yeah. him and McIntyre, I just I just don't I, I don't really care to, I don't really care to see that honestly. Um, I, because, I just don't uh, get Reigns, I don't get the feel. Yeah. No, you know what I mean. Yeah, I. I I hear you. I hear you. Ray, I'm curious what you think, but I, I don't get the feel with that match. I feel like uh, nobody can really benefit because if Edge beats McIntyre, then you just destroy everything you did with McIntyre. Uh, Reigns as a heel, at least you can kind of regroup with that. And Edge, I mean, you didn't have him this come, far, come this far to not win the belt. So there's a couple of things that, that kind of go into this. Um, I am with Stro. I don't... I don't see the appeal in a Reigns McIntyre match. I think I think putting him with Edge is the only way that that's necessarily interesting viewing now. Now I think later down the line, I think you can make McIntyre Reigns interesting, but as of right now, I don't think in the in the what two months ish that we have until WrestleMania, mm-hmm. I don't necessarily know if you if you can make something both interesting and believable and to the magnitude that it should be for WrestleMania in whatever form WrestleMania takes a a couple of, a couple of thoughts kind of coming out of the discussion that you guys started. Number one, um, I am tentatively excited about edge winning the, the rumble. I would have preferred to see Big E win it. And that's not just because I am a Big E, uh, I'm a Big E fan, um, but it, it's just that I think, I think long-term you kind of want to stop making those ridiculous faces. Um, Sorry. I am, I, I am of the mind that you don't necessarily want to have the rumble go to a guy at the point in his career that edges sort of, sort of the way you didn't want to see Mr. McMahon win it. You know, that, that didn't, that didn't really do much of anything for anyone. I am tentatively okay with it. If they know that there is going to be a crowd at WrestleMania and they are going to get the, the atmospheric and crowd factor payoff that they missed out on a year ago, because you know, that's what they're going for. Mm -hmm. And if they're going into this sort of crossing their fingers and hoping then I think it's a bad move because all you're doing is wasting a Royal rumble on edge for a payoff that track record says they would take a third swing at next year. Um, as for the women, Matt brought up something interesting and it's, it's such a weird problem for a company to have, but I suppose it's not one that's all that uncommon. He's right. They need to make the women into characters and, to make them character characters that are compelling. And they've shown that they can do that. They did it with Charlotte Flair. They did it with Bailey. They did it with Becky Lynch. And, you know, I would say of the three, only Becky is, is like the truly sort of like, you know, when you Developed? think of a Hall of Fame wrestler, I would, I would say she's yeah. probably the only one who's like up there as far as that talent level goes, nothing against mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bailey or Charlotte. Oh, don't mm-hmm, mm-hmm. me. Um, <laughs> The thing is, is that if you look at the, if you look at some of the women on that roster that maybe, you know, don't quite have the character development that you would like to see, the best mm-hmm. thing that creative Fine. could do is just get out of the way. Sasha Banks should be an absolute rock star. 
and she's just not. You're real happy every time she comes down to the ring because you know the match is going to be good. But, like, if you said, like, if you said describe the character of Sasha Banks, I couldn't do that the way I could describe, you know, a lot of the wrestlers of the past. I could describe Kurt Angle's character. I could describe right. Yokozuna's character. What do I, Sasha Banks wears the, the Kanye sunglasses. What? It's, um, it, it's interesting that you bring that up. Uh, I was actually watching a couple documentaries today and we actually have a couple callers in the line. Uh, caller number one, I'm going to get to you in one second. Just hang tight. Uh, but I was watching a couple documentaries today, guys, and uh, one of them was the Yokozuna one, which was like, oh, my God, like I could have like, I'm still a little choked up about it. I, I always thought he was really cool. And like, awesome. it was it was sad, you know, it was sad to see the real uh, Yoko and, and to see what he went through. Uh, I don't know if you guys got the chance to check that out, but if you did. Uh, if you, I'm sorry, if you didn't, then uh, you definitely want to. It's on WWE Network right now. Uh, the other one was the Liv Morgan one. And, and that's kind of the point that you had brought up, Ray. Uh, Liv Morgan, um, when Paul Heyman took over writing for Raw and she was in there and they brought her in and everything, um, they told her that they wanted her to just be open-ended, Ray. They had no concept for a character. They just wanted her to go out there and just be nothing just be everything at the same time. And to me, it struck me as like such a horrible <laughs> idea. But, I, but Matt, I can't help but wonder if that's not like what they do with a lot of these women. I, not just the women, I think they do it with the men. Yeah, they, they just, do. Just go out there. It's just, like, just go out there and yeah. be, be, what, be what you think we want you to be. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the it's, character it's, development. It's laughable. It's, yeah, it's like the character development. It's like the, these wrestlers are being portrayed by kindergartners. And that's like the base level of understanding, like, 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 uh, like uh, uh, Mustafa Ali. Uh, is it Mustafa Ali or Muhammad Ali? Mustafa Ali. He, um, Mustafa. He, he's uh, angry. He's angry, uh, he's angry uh, at uh, Kofi uh, uh, for costing him a shot because he got hurt. And that has driven everything to this point. He just keeps repeating the same point over and over again every show. It's stupid. What, what are you going to do something about it? Like, yeah. Like, if that's what's bothering yeah. you, what are you going to do about it? You're going to create a, a substandard okay. group to, to, to kill the dark matches. Right. I got I to say, guys, <laughs> that the women's... All right, uh, four-way stop. Uh, Stro, you go, then Matt, finish up. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, but I got to say, you know, with, with, with that being set aside, I... I the women's Royal Rumble match uh, was just over the top. Uh, show stealer tonight, and the uh, the the promo that um, Bianca gave afterwards. Uh, you know, it was so refreshing to see a heartfelt promo from the heart, and I like a, a scripted promo, your typical deal. I mean, it was you can tell it was genuine, and it really hit home and hit the moment. And um, it was all in all, in all, the women's Royal Rumble really hit a home run. I think, in my opinion. Uh, me too. Me too. Uh, go ahead, Matt. Well, one of the like, when Ricochet came out last night, they, they one of the just probably Cole they said something to the effect of like like Monday Night Raw's like resident superhero. Mm-hmm. And when he said that, I'm like, what are you calling him a superhero for? Is it because he does lots of flips? Flippies. Yeah. I'm like, and yes. then and then and in the same it, it, like within like a. 10 minute time frame of that. Here comes the hurricane. And I'm like, look, is, is he kind of a comedy character? Yes. But if you sit here and call him a superhero, I'm going to know exactly why you're saying that, especially as somebody who, you know, watched it 15 years ago when he was. Yeah. On yeah. And it's just, it's just the, the lack. And I mean, hurricane was never treated as a main event guy in WWE, but he at least had a character and you at least understood who he was and what his motivations were. It, it's funny. You yeah. Look at the modern crop of guys and they don't have that. They don't have it at all. It, it's funny. It's funny. And it's going to lead to our first caller actually. Uh, but I never thought I would pine for the days of the early two thousands people, you know, <laughs> not even the attitude right. era, the, the ruthless aggression era, because at least like they had an idea where they were going with everything. Uh, yeah. 2003. Yeah. Uh, give me edge. Oh. And that's what WWE gave us. And I'm going to go to Kelly first, Kathy. Uh, I, I know you'll be excited to talk to her. 
my 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 uh, incredible girlfriend is calling in to talk specifically, I believe, about Edge. What's going on, Kelly? I can follow like a little bit of it. So <laughs> anyway, hi, how y'all doing? Hi. <laughs> and so, um, I, How's it going? I'm not, <laughs> going all right. I'm not in I'm not in any yeah. way um remotely a wrestling fan, which is fine. Breed and I have left in nearly eight years with <laughs> that being She she just watches <laughs> them all with me, Matt. She's not a fan. Yeah. Right, right. No, yeah. No, not really. <laughs> like, like most fans. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. Kelly, you, you had a rant. You, you had a rant about Edge specifically, I believe. <laughs> not to put you on the spot. Um, so, <laughs> all right. So here's, so, here's the scene. As most of you know, like, I'm an educator, so I just been working hard to try to finish my lesson planning up prior to dinner. So after dinner, I can have an hour or so. You know, if I'm sitting in front of the TV, I can, you know, grade papers, you know, grade stuff while I'm, you know, kind of sitting there on the couch chilling out with, with Brady and, you know, the TV. So I'm trying to work <laughs> on that. So first of all, we watched like that Liv Morgan documentary, <laughs> whatever you call it. And I, the only thing I'd say about that is she looked exactly like Alexa Bliss. Were they trying to do it like an Alexa Bliss? Like, I don't know. Repeat. There's <laughs> 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 nothing wrong, wrong with that. Down, but I certainly think she looks like Alexa Bliss. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just playing. Go ahead. <laughs> so that was the first comment. <laughs> the second comment is, you know, we're watching, I guess, for Brady. The recording of SmackDown is that what? Uh, like? Raw, yeah. We we fast forwarded <laughs> through the matches on Raw yeah, so we could Raw. get a feel for all the angles. I don't even know what the hell we were watching. I just <laughs> 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 and then all of a sudden, you know, like I know a little bit about Edge. I know Edge is like a really old dude. You know, and so watching this. You called him the Edge I'm for the first year. Watching. I'm half watching. So I'm trying to grade papers on like you know Google Classroom while I'm watching this. Yeah. And looks like to me like the match between the Edge and Randy Orton lasted about three minutes. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, just out of the random blue, there's the <laughs> possessed Alexa Bliss <laughs> chewing on something stuck in her mouth that... Exactly! <laughs> tell it, please. <laughs> Keep, Kelly, <laughs> tell it, please. That's a developed yes. character. So... These something's are, developed. These are probably too old parts that can't wrestle anymore. And all they can really do is go in or go at it for about three, four minutes before they need oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. In there. All right, Brady, I have a question. I have. <laughs> I have go question. ahead. You've been, so you've been dating Kelly for eight years. Be good. And, Be good. Be good. And, Not eight and, years. And this is this is the best phone that you can get her. The best phone. But why we does, have our own cell phone plans, sir. Why does it, why does it sound like she's calling from the bottom of the sea? <laughs> you are a terrible boyfriend. <laughs> I'm sorry if it's only like I'm calling from the bottom of the sea. I do have an older iPhone. And it's an iPhone 8. I don't know if that's, <laughs> well, no, I don't blame Kelly. I don't blame you at all. You're so nice to 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 come on the show and put up with our idiocy. I I, I put the blame squarely it's like on a charity Hicks. thing. <laughs> oh, if she documents this, it's one hundred percent like good for community service toward a future crime. I get. I guarantee you. <laughs> If Kelly decides tomorrow that this isn't going to work between us, uh, which would be a horrible thing for me, by the way, um, I guarantee you that this call could be uh, one of the leading factors. So, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> you should probably not. <laughs> probably not. Oh, uh, so yeah, no, yeah, I get Brady, your point. You ain't telling me worse qualities in this phone call. <laughs> You're crappy in a lot of different ways. Don't sell yourself short. I, uh, Ke oh, Kelly, you know, Edge is old. Randy Orton is getting up there. You're, you're absolutely right. But 
And Goldberg, too, is the other one. Um, I actually felt bad for Goldberg on Sunday, which is something that has never happened to me before. He looked so out of place in a match that had to have more than three moves. It, it was absolutely horrible. And uh, granted, I'm not the biggest Goldberg fan anyway, but I just he just looked to me like about five steps behind Drew McIntyre the entire time. That's at least how I perceived it. Um, maybe, maybe if you're going to be older and do this, we stop just relying on the name value and actually go with people that can actually go. Thank you for the call, by the way, Kelly. I love you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. No problem. <laughs> I love you very much, too. I Have a good night. To go to bed, though. <laughs> I know you do. I know. I don't want to keep you. I don't. Uh, uh, Tuesday night, Matt. I usually <laughs> sleep in my own back bedroom back here because, uh, you know, I'm so <laughs> amped up. I I would otherwise be going to bed at four in the morning, and that's not good. Four in the morning. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's understandable. Because you're up at yeah. 2 in the morning. <laughs> One might say I'm edge-isled instead of exiled. Oh, ah! right. <laughs> Shut up, bump. Take care. All right, bye. Bye. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> that was something. That was nice. She's the best caller we've nice. had in a while. She, she really is. She, she absolutely is. is. She is. Brady, did you notice that I got video? I did, yeah. What's going on with that? You decided to well, uh, you know, a new luchador mask or nothing? No, no luchador mask. I'm just, I'm just here out and about, you know, just, uh, just appearing on the on the tube, the YouTube, you know, for all the for all the YouTubers to uh, to see. And I figure we don't do anything that inappropriate on this show anymore. You know, and go ahead and and just sort of, just sort of uh, uh, make the show complete. Make the show complete. You know, I to to get us back onto onto what we were talking about. I you have a good point when you when you say if you're going to go with some of the older guys to go with guys that can actually still go. But you would think that WWE would have learned that years ago when they did the Chris Jericho angle with the WWE legends, and the only one who could walk was. Uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And yeah. So, so the, the the fact that they haven't tells me they're not going to. And and Saudi Arabia as well is the other one. Like uh that that Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, Triple H Kane uh fiasco. Uh yeah, and, and Goldberg against Undertaker. Yeah, there's many instances of this now, uh, where they rely almost purely on name value and Back in the day, if they were relying on name value, they didn't necessarily put you in a, a, a featured main event match. Right. You were kind of, you know, you were kind of almost like a, like a pre-main event, main event kind of match. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But if they're going to, if, look, they knew. They, they knew before the night of that match that Goldberg is running on three quarter speed. Mm -hmm. You have to be smarter about this. No, I think they handled it as best they could given the circumstance that they put themselves into, but you have to, you have to be smarter about that going in. I I agree. I, I, you know, it it takes um, kind of a level of common sense, Matt, that I feel like, has really been missing for a while, quite honestly. Um, I think that, yeah, I mean, yeah, go ahead. He's what, a 50, is he 55 year old man? Something like that. Yeah. No, granted he's jacked. Yeah. But he never had the most, at least that stroke. I I, I say this with no disrespect. Of course, I I know you're close with him. Um, I, I never really felt like he had the stamina of a lot of the other guys. And that's why his matches tend to have to be five minutes long. I mean, I'm wrong there. But to put him in, I, I, I guess it worked in that, like, Drew McIntyre really kind of bolstered his name by beating him so easily. But, you know, at what point is there no longer value in having Goldberg there? <laughs> 
Uh, well, I mean, you can consider how old the guy is now. I mean, he's definitely going. I mean, back in the day, he 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 was just a beast. He was a monster. Yeah. And, yeah. And 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 now, I mean, I mean, age catches up with everybody. It, it it's just fascinating to me how people would complain about Goldberg, but Edge wins the Rumble, and everybody's like, "Oh yeah, wonderful." I know it's funny. Yeah. It's what, funny. what 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 a, what a contradiction that is. But um, I just in, in, I think, anyhow, I just, yeah. Anyhow. Goldberg, uh, and just and you know, taking for somebody that was there when he was in his prime and his streak. I mean, he was just amazing to watch. It was it was, it was awesome to witness. But now, of course, you know, like if our time catches up with all of us, and, and it, it's great to have people make appearances for nostalgia's sake, do their thing, and write. But there's a young, young, a great younger talent pool right now. This itching and clawing at the wings to climb up that ladder and get that exposure. And, and I, I, I just feel like at times they're being robbed. Me too. I mean, me too. Um, even, even as far as like the Royal rumble goes, like it, it struck me as odd. Um, it struck me as odd, Matt, that, uh, that edge would be the guy to win it uh, just because of the age and all that. I understand the storyline that they wanted to do, uh, but edge didn't need the title to do that comeback. And furthermore, Edge could have still challenged for a title without winning the Royal Rumble. It really didn't matter. Um, I feel like that was a spot that they probably could have given to somebody else. But with that said, full circle here, you know, who's more compelling at this point? Well, man, exactly. And there is, therein lies, therein lies the problem. Um, Like, your two other top guys who would have made for good winners already the title holders. And I, well, I, I think I, AJ Styles, I know people are going to be divided on. Yeah. I mean, but he's a heel and heels never win the world. Well, rarely win the Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I, so I don't, I don't necessarily know. think I just, I, I think they've kind of done this to themselves. I mean, they put themselves in this position where they have all the talent in the like uh, that you could ever want employed under one roof, but they've never buy it. The Liv Morgan thing you said is a perfect illustration of it. It's like, just go out there. We don't really have anything specific in mind for you and just go out there and wrestle. Yeah. And when you do no that, good. You, you don't have car- you don't have people that the fans want to invest in. And, like Stroh was saying, I, look, you say what you want about Goldberg, but in his prime, he had this explosive quality to him, and he was compelling. Now, not maybe he's not everybody's cup of tea, but you, nobody can really deny that he had that. And Edge has been compelling for pretty much the entirety of his career in in different, you know, different forms of different takes on the character. Like, who does WWE have that's matching that right now i mean you could argue maybe styles to a point and maybe brian to a point but like beyond that uh, you're the only other two guys who have that are already holding with your two top titles so matt a couple of things to piggyback off that number one i think that if you i think it's wrong to i think i think you you're alluding to it and and stro was was a little bit more direct with it i think it's wrong to lay kind of the dud that that match was at the feet of Goldberg, because you guys are right. When, when he was in his prime, Goldberg was for whatever criticisms you had of him, he was compelling. And, and his, his matches, again, whatever criticism you want to levy at them, they, they were matches that you needed to see. That being said, I think that Goldberg was set up to fail by WWE and it's because of his age. Goldberg is, you know, he's 55. He's my mom's age. And, you know, that's... It's almost my age. Yeah, I mean, well... <laughs> um, you know, to, to put... To put a burden on him the way they did with the way they built and booked that match... That's not the fault of Goldberg. That's one of those things where, like, if you set an expectation that someone can live up to and they don't, then that's on them. But if you set an expectation that someone can't live up to anymore, 
or couldn't live up to, to begin with, that's on you. And Goldberg's knowledge and his character, none of that stuff changes, but you know, Stroh said it best father time catches us all. And Goldberg has been running for a while now. So to put him in a position where he is asked to somehow become younger, that's at the fault of WWE. And the character development is too. The way Matt has been wording his phrasing here is interesting and I think highlights a problem. Um, you know, they, they told Liv Morgan to go out there and be, and then the way that it was worded, uh, the way it was worded in our discussion was be who you think we want you to be. <laughs> when instead... <laughs> and then they threw her out there for the wedding angle. Correct. But with, instead, no, with, no, with no direction, yeah. Correct. Now, here's the thing. No direction is okay. You're, you're a the, lesbian now. Get out if, there. <laughs> <laughs> Good news. You're from New Jersey. <laughs> I'm kidding, New Jersey. The, I'm kidding. But the, pro <laughs> the problem is, men, is that going out there with, with no or little direction is okay if your instructions are be who you are. Because if you tell yeah. someone, go out, go out there and be who you are in your natural state, then you will, by definition, be compelling. And you know, one of the criticisms yeah. I've, I've levied on this show for years is that the, the wrestlers in WWE, they don't speak like humans. Because no human being has the diction <laughs> that WWE wrestlers have when they're giving promos. And if That's they would just go call out there center, and be people themselves, write their promos. Call, right, call center because, people write their pro yeah. Yeah, it's because so if, the they would be told, people. Yeah. if they would be told, go out there and be who you are, not yeah. be, who, be who you think we want you to be, the character development, they would, creative wouldn't have to, wouldn't, they wouldn't have to develop characters. Fine, they suck at developing characters. They wouldn't have to if they would tell people to just be as they are. I, I, um, Matt, uh, Matt I, I find it ironic that for years, uh, the criticism that we threw at WWE was it was too scripted. You know, uh, just everything had to be written out ahead of right. time, memorized, uh, not, nothing candid, nothing spontaneous. And you can throw that at the feet of the talent if you want. Uh, certainly, uh, there's a difference between telling Liv Morgan to be herself and telling Stone Cold Steve Austin to be himself. Uh, two totally different worlds, especially at this point when you've spent oh, no right. time. Uh, you, you may have improved Liv Morgan in the ring, but that doesn't mean that you've improved Liv Morgan's personality in terms of being able to amplify the best parts of her. Well, that came out wrong because uh, she certainly does amplify the best parts of herself in a lot of different ways. But I mean, in terms of actually amplifying the personality, I saw the eye roll there. I, I saw that. Um, she's, she's, she's not very good at amplifying her personality. And that's a problem almost across the board with this roster at this point. Glad you couldn't see my eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> she amplifies. It's okay. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, so it's interesting. Again, 914-338-1885. Um, let's go to the phones, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to bring on... Um, the. <laughs> What's going on, Harry? Harry Barnett. You there? Once, twice. All right, forget Bye. Harry. Let's go to Bye, Harry. Let's go to the Skype caller. Maybe it's not Harry. You're on in the room. What's going on? All right. Two for two. We're looking good. Uh, let's go to Rat Boy because we know he's yeah. going to be there. He's been all sitting there all night. He's there. Uh, yeah. I, I, and by the way, WWE told Rat Boy to be himself too. And this is what, uh, uh, if, if they <laughs> did, this is what we would happen. get. Yeah. Well, what's going on, Rat Boy? I bet the app went everybody's face. Let's give it up for Carlito. He finally made it to the WWE once again. You think he's going to be the new MVP? No. Me neither. I think so. 
All right. <laughs> I say no. But he looks Jack, man. Okay, he looks like, Matt, he looked like the GameCube version yeah, of himself. <laughs> he really is yeah. big, you know? His I, muscles I, were square. I, I think he's <laughs> I think we could go a long way this time. I hope so. Who knew apples were good for you? I was yeah, serious. No, I, can't, <laughs> oh, I can't wait to bite into an apple. Here, here I'm eating candy bars because I, I thought that, that was what was good for me. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, Rep, what you were saying hey, in the uh, chat. I got some... Uh, I, I, go ahead. Go I got ahead. some notes for you before I get into my Royal Rumble stuff. Okay. Oh, good. Uh, He's got a list. I was happy to... Yeah, not, not a less. Okay. Let's say, uh, rest in peace, uh, Dustin Diamond Screech. He passed away to 44. Screech, yes. Yeah, Yesterday. poor Screech. Oh, yeah. He was great in that Hulk Hogan show, yeah. by the way. Celebrity Championship Wrestling. If you guys remember that show. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. They each had like a, it was like, I Dobbs think Brian Nobbs and um, who was the other one? Do you remember the other coach? They were Hulk Hogan's friends. And like they each had a team of celebrities and they trained them how to wrestle like tough enough. And then they did like their own little show. And Screech was like the best on it. Yeah. Jimmy Hart was coaching him along. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Jimmy. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Rapley. And before anybody say anything, okay, no, John Cena will not be at WrestleMania 37 this year. He's yeah, not I going saw to be that. there. I saw I that. Hear nothing, I don't want to hear nothing about John Cena. I, I do find it funny that all these years, you know, kind of, and I'm sure a lot, a lot of it was like of a work nature and everything, but like, I find it funny that um, he would criticize The Rock that much. For basically choosing Hollywood over WWE, and he went and did the exact same thing, almost to the T, just not as successfully. Yep. No. But he's on that path. He's on that path, though. Yeah, but he's not. And this is—I can't believe I'm saying this because it's not exactly a high bar. He's not <laughs> quite as gifted in the acting range. <laughs> you think he's as good as Batista? I think he's as good as Big Show. <laughs> that was a great Netflix show, by the way. <laughs> well, what was right. what was the movie he did? Clumpus or something like that? I don't remember that. Wasn't he? He did well. He did the one with Goldberg, the Christmas one. Knucklehead or Knucklehead? Knucklehead. Well, that was a WWE film, wasn't it? I don't know. Yeah. I know, I know he did a few. Like he was in that Adam Sandler movie, and I don't know. Cena was good in Bumblebee. I never saw Bumblebee. Yeah, yeah, that was a good flick. Bumblebee was. Now, is that anything like Actually, the B movie? Of all, of all the Transformers movies, that is by far the best one. I know that's not exactly high praise, but that's it, the best yeah, one of all. It's, it's Excluding rough. the cartoon, you mean? Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. look. Oh, you mean like the, re- the rebooted? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I only saw the first one, and I wasn't that much of a fan, so I never saw another one. I kind of felt like I would rather just stick with the cartoon. any of the other ones. Okay. Yeah, well, maybe I'll, I'll Rad Boy's, maybe Rad Boy's, Boy's saying John Cena's not going to be a WrestleMania because he can't see him. Mm. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rat Boy was probably about to talk about Bumblebee Tuna. Bumblebee Tuna, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm about to talk about... uh, Rat Boy, first off, I I got a good question for you first, though. I need to know, are you solid white or chunk light? I think you're solid white. Me too. Chunk light is like cat food. Yeah. That's why I give it to my cat. That's why I thought you might eat the chunk light. But the question is, who is the oldest to win the Royal Rumble? Well, Hacksaw is. I think he's the oldest. Nope. Because he's in like his 60s now. 
Might even be Hulk Hogan nope. is the oldest. Nope. I thought you were asking about the oldest person alive that won the Rumble. And I would say it's Hulk Hogan or Hacksaw. Who is the oldest person ever won the Royal Rumble? My joke's falling flat. I know who it is. It's Edge. All uh, right, it's McMahon. 53 in 1999. Oh, that's right. That's right. But Edge is older, isn't he? Following. No, Edge is in his 40s. Anyone Never mind. Following is Edge of 47 of age. Yeah. He could still have a pretty decent career in AEW when this is over. Then it comes Triple H. Then it comes Triple H. What does this matter, though? (laughs) You know, uh, I've just seen it. I think Edge did uh, beat the record for the Royal Rumble for the time being in the Royal Rumble. No, no, not even close. He didn't even break an hour. Remember the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, had that record. <laughs> yeah, he's not. Yeah, okay, he was no uh, let, me, let me say about the female. All right. Here comes Kane. All right, fine. Tell us about the female. <laughs> Tell us about the female. The <laughs> female Royal Rumble. I was so happy. The way they laid everything out on, 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 on everybody, you know, the lineup. Mm-hmm. 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 That's a good I point. I loved every, every person that came out. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. Victoria. I loved every person who came Victoria out, too. Victoria was there. Mm-hmm. 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 Victoria was the, I think Victoria was hot. And she still got mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she is a developed character, and as always, they say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm telling you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The last time I seen her was back in 2000. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, whatever. You know, she she still looks good. Yep. Like a person and? that really looks fine, but at least a, like at least a fox. Here comes Kane once again. <laughs> Rat boy, you know, you brought up the going in the I chat. You brought up the point in the chat, and uh, I, I did notice it, uh, that Bianca Belair's feet actually touched the floor. Of course, none of it matters because uh, we've had numerous people where their feet touched the floor over the years, and it doesn't matter if that's not the story that they want to tell. So, If the ref doesn't it is, say it, it yeah, didn't I happen. Know. <laughs> Stone Cold taught us that. He, threw, he, 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 uh, he, he got eliminated. He ran back in and threw Bret Hart out. I yeah, my feet touched the ground. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> All right, Rapper. <laughs> and, and, and Alicia Fox, she won a 24-7 belt. All of a sudden, she lost it. And all of a sudden, now we got Reidenberg got the belt now, 24-7. Yeah. Joy. Joy. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, R-Truth will win it back this week in some sort of a segment. Yeah, he wasn't even on this week. So, uh, Rat Boy, who's, uh, who's Bianca Belair going to challenge for the belt? Alundra Blaze. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I was hoping Medusa. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say... Oh, um, that's the same person. Never mind. God, Rat Boy's still here? <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? China? I might say... I said Oscar. Oscar. Okay. And I think it's going to be the opposite of that. I think she's going to challenge Sasha Banks, but uh, we will see. And, and another point. Is what is that? Last night. Somebody shaking the salt? Last night I noticed something. Last night I noticed something. Okay. With Nikki Cross and Alexa Bridges match. I noticed something there too. <laughs> Electric Brick had a start double. That was a start double on her. Mm-hmm. Okay. Kane, we may need you one more time. You know, they're going to be bringing her in at the WrestleMania. Electric Brick is double. Her twin sister. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Rap Boy. Earl Hebner. Let's, let's try this Hebner. again. 
And, and in two weeks... Here, 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 Kane is back! In two weeks, I'll be... He's got a I'll hook! Right here, on a VOC Nation... In Rat the Boy, you got a phone call! You got a phone call, Rat Boy! With you guys! It's Dino Evil! He's got the hook! I'll be able to see with you guys showing off my brand new teeth. Alright, brother. You smile brightly, then. Where's the gorilla take hand to take Rat Boy away? Take, Bye, Rat Boy. Take care, homie. <laughs> take care. Uh, listen, uh, we're going to take a commercial break right now. We'll get that out of the way. Uh, 914-338-1885. We still have a couple callers in the line. And we will get to you guys in short order. Uh, this is In the Room on the VOC Nation Radio Network at vocnation.com. And we will be right back. This is Matt Hardy, and you are listening to the VOC Nation. Rock and Roll Union for the past two years has been the place for rock and roll, new rock and roll, debuting rock and roll, and some of the old classics as well. We have welcomed guests from around the world, national artists and more. We have excited many people by our live events. We've welcomed everybody into the fold, and we continue to do so on a weekly basis. Guys, that is Rock and Roll Union, and that is what we do for you. Saturdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, VOC Nation. Since 2012, HIC Talk Radio has been bringing you the best of independent wrestling and wrestling on the worldwide scale with interviews and other segments now featuring the Wrestling Historian with Craig Lagan every Thursday night at 6 p.m. at VOCNation.com or go to your Android or iPhone and type in VOC Nation Radio Network and subscribe to the greatest wrestling podcast network in the world. Listen to HIAC Wrestling Podcast today. VOC Nation provides live daily streaming shows where fans have the ability to interact with the hosts and guests by phone call, email, and Twitter. VOC Nation hosts include the legendary Ken Resnick, you probably remember from the AWA and WWE, former WCW performer, the Maestro, Wes Briscoe, who you probably remember from Impact, Brady Hicks, who you remember from Pro Wrestling Illustrated, former WWE and TNA star Shelly Martinez, and former Philly radio personality Bruce Wirt. What are you waiting for? Go listen live right now at VOCNation.com and subscribe to all of our podcasts by searching for VOC Nation Radio Network on your favorite podcast app. Oh, and follow them on Twitter, too, at VOC Nation. The worldwide leader in entertainment. This is the VOC Nation Radio Network. I got to tell you guys, it's going to take a long time for me to get used to just generic free music, but uh, apparently that's the way the real world works, and that's what I got to do if uh, <laughs> if we don't want to get sued on YouTube. So uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you, by the way, we are streaming 
on YouTube as well, not live, but you can check out the archived version of the show. You'll see my face. Uh, you'll see Stro Maestro over there. You'll see Ray Bogus uh, in the flesh. He looks thrilled to be here. That's what I'd expect. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where we are tonight. Of course, 914-338-1885. We're talking Royal Rumble fallout. We're talking a little bit of build-up for WrestleMania. And I want to talk about the Super 8 for a second as well. Uh, but before we get to all that stuff, Stro, what do you got going on this week, man? What's the what's the movie of the week? <laughs> this Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard <laughs> Time, WCW Retro on VOCNation.com. And topic discussion for this Thursday night will be greatest cruiserweights and junior heavyweights of wrestling. So uh, be sure to tune in for that. And then this Friday night on my horror sci-fi show, The Stro Zone, at midnight Eastern Standard Time on my official Facebook page, facebook.com slash Joe the Maestro. Uh, this Friday night's feature will be Phantom from Space from the 50s, so please tune in. Ooh. Very cool. Now, the 50s ones, those really are the best. Uh, amazing <laughs> era. Yeah, amazing. The, the, the 50s and the 30s, just really your two, your two kind of top eras for that. Something about not having all the special effects, you know, it just... It just seemed cooler. Well, yeah, you had to you uh, had to create you had to create suspense through mood and character development and camera angles. Yeah, like WWE used to do. Remember when they did that? I do. I remember do. They, they did would, it twice during their fifty-year period, three remember, times maybe. Remember when they would create suspense for the match? Uh, they create. Remember how they created suspense for? Um, for the match at, at WrestleMania, at, for the re- match at WrestleMania three, by showing kind of the Iron Sheik walking away from the tag team match, rubbing his bald head. <laughs> huh? Huh? Yeah. I really only just wanted to bring that up because I, I like. That's to work, exciting. Well, I like to work in an Iron Sheik reference, you know, at least once yeah, or yeah. once or twice a show. You, you know, it's funny. I see all these people on social media. Uh, because um, apparently that rapper, something bunny, was it, it wasn't Easter Bunny. It was a, was it Sea Bunny? Was it Bad Bunny? Uh, what was it? Bad, Bad Bunny? Bunny. Why did, How why stupid Kathy, is that? Why was Kathy the one who knew that? Yeah. Kathy? Is, it, is it wrong? Is it, to the show. Is, is it is it wrong that uh, I was more impressed by Kevin Federline? Like, is that wrong? No. no. It wasn't. Okay. It wasn't. No, but I, I just, mean, apparently he's a big deal. I, I had, I never heard of him. Well, see, my question is like, Kathy, are you like secretly plugged into the rap community? Gangster rap. No, he did the rap thing with that book. Yeah. Oh, he did. That was awful, by the way. That was awful, by the way. Okay. The real video was pretty good. This is okay. All yeah, I didn't see the real video now. <laughs> the, the real video was pretty good. What do you the one they did the other night was horrible. Yeah. This is, this is all coming together now. I'll, I'll have to see it. I, I will have to see it. Um, because That's the one awesome. thing that I saw at the Royal Rumble was horrible, and I, I know I'm going to get yelled at, guys, and, and uh, you can know that for a fact, because uh, we're going to bring on Derek, actually who in a lot of ways is probably going to help save this show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, talking, we're talking about the, the bad bunny, that, that guy, um, I, who I never heard of. Are you one of those people? Are you one of no, those I, people don't, I don't care, but I thought the you performance, his performance made me not want to see him ever again. Like I, I thought Kevin Federline blew him away in terms of like what he well, actually did. Is, is, um, I don't think there's ever been a good musical performance on wrestling, so I don't know why people are surprised when they're bad. They're never really good. Kid Rock wasn't um, bad. Yeah? You mean he had all the divas walking out to distract you from the fact that his performance was bad? <laughs> well, not only well, that, but they also did the Lonely Road of Faith thing. Now, Derek, what about, uh, what about um, Liberace's performance at WrestleMania? That was good. <laughs> when he kicked I don't think I was born yet, but I've seen it. Um, I guess you can't mess up a leg kick with the Rockettes, right? 
Is that what he did? He did the, the Rockettes thing? Well, are we allowed to have the Rockettes anymore, or is yeah. that is that somehow or like is that banned? No, why would it be banned? <laughs> well, because I know because we're not supposed to sexualize people anymore. Oh. Yeah, no, WWE hates sexualizing uh, people. Okay. <laughs> I, um, I, I've seen when, well, after I finished working like a madman the last couple of days, I, um... I you see all dollar bills falling from this guy. Again. Yeah, but if it never snows again, it'll be too soon for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, 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 Catching the train. I saw people say, yeah, I saw people <laughs> going, you know, I don't know who he is, and I don't listen to Bad Bunny. Um, I know who he is. Um, he's he's a fairly big deal, but like I saw some fans going, "This is stupid," and blah 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 blah. I will say this: for all that he did with his performance, I watched him on the Raw um, and WWE. They're using somebody who has a name. They're using him the right way because you're taking yeah. him and you're putting him next to a, a guy in Damon Priest who you want people to care about. Yeah, it's like oh, okay. Like, at, as long as you're using them like that, I get it. Um, as opposed to, you know, the other channel where Shaq is fighting Cody Rhodes. And it's like, well, Shaq, you could use Shaq to give shine to somebody else, and it would work that way. I, I was going to say, better than how AEW is using Snoop Dogg? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, oh God. I, um, um yeah. I, 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 Here's my thing. I I, I thought, um, uh, granted, I'm out of touch because I didn't know who the Bad Bunny was. I got excited because I thought uh, Cherry, uh, what's her name, was going to be coming in. You know, Cherry Bomb. But she's the bunny on AEW, and I just assumed that's what they were doing. Um, I was wrong. Uh, Talk about needing to introduce more developed characters. We're talking about developed characters tonight, Derek. And uh, I I was watching, well, first of all, I watched two documentaries today. Uh, One was Yokozuna, which um, just blew me away. Uh, I always liked the guy. I always thought he was kind of cool. And um, just getting to see all that backstage stuff with him and, like, how he was and, like, how everybody loved him and stuff. It just, it was such a touching documentary. It was so great. Yeah. Um, and, and I recommend people check it out. It, it's up right now on the WWE Network. The other one I saw, Derek, and this was I thought kind of funny, is uh, the Liv Morgan thing that she did back in November. Uh, and it's oh, yeah. funny because after like a year off of television, Paul Heyman had an idea for her return. And when he brought her into Raw, he said to her, I want you to be undefined. So they give her no idea, no idea what to do. Be like yourself, be different than yourself, whatever. Just go out there. And by the way, you're a lesbian breaking up the wedding. That literally was the only advice that they gave her. (laughs) And and I thought it totally showed on television. Um, These women, and and I, I, um, for all the jokes that I make, a lot of these women are very Mm. underdeveloped in terms of like the presentation. As opposed to like the guys who are like the established guys, it's like bam, like bam, like they don't have that anymore. There's not, I don't know. It's 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 a weird. Well, that's why. That's why I can understand why Vince pushes Charlotte the way he does. I mean, it's, it's annoying at times, but she looks like a star. She feels like a star when you see her on television. Like if you were turning the channels and Charlotte came out, you go, oh, she's somebody important by her presentation. Yeah. Um, like I said, a lot of these women are just wrestlers with different outfits on. Um, and some of them, I think, if you gave them an opportunity, they could show personality. Like a Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan, they could be different than anything else they have on television, but they don't give them the time to show that character. So when they come out, it's just, oh, it's Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot. And that's the end of it. Um, I think this way it would help if the women maybe have their own show where you could kind of let them develop characters on that show. So when they got on the Raw or when they got on SmackDown, you would understand, you know, like what's going on. Like Shotzi Blackheart. I like Shotzi Blackheart. Yeah. So most people don't, don't understand why she comes out in the tank. It's like, well, why the hell does she have a tank? Is she tank girl? Like, 
Like, most people don't <laughs> understand what's going on when they see it. And you right. have to have a telling story to get that through. No, it's true. It, it's true. And especially a lot of the younger talent, they just haven't invested that time in kind of making them stand out. I, I said it's one thing to uh, tell Stone Cold Steve Austin to just go out there and be himself. It's another thing mm-hmm. entirely, Ray, to tell Liv Morgan to go out and do that. Well, the thing, I, what I, I think the difference is, I don't, I'm not necessarily sure that that's something you can't do to Liv Morgan. The problem is that you have to say, go be yourself. And then you have to then accept the character that comes from that. Yeah. And like, you can't, <laughs> right. you can't say, you can't say, go out there. Yes. You have to, you have to say, go out there and be you or go out there and be the anti you. And yeah. one of those works, but you can't just, you can't say, go out there. Like that's even Stro would struggle with that. Like if, <laughs> if I'm booking a show and I just say, Hey, Stro, if I say Stro, go out there and be who you are because I want to book him as a face. And he's yeah. out there and he's the genuinely nice, personable guy that we know he is. That's a compelling character. And if we say, Stro, right. go out there and be the anti you. And, you know, he's a raging jerk. That's still a compelling character. But if I just say, hey, Stro, we booked you in a match. Go out there. Well, he, <laughs> doesn't, know, he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> right. I thought it was funny that Paul Heyman would yeah. say that, uh, you know, Stro, it's actually uh, be your happened step. to me a few times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. But it's like, hey, Liv, go out there and be yourself. And by the way, be a lesbian. Like, all right, <laughs> come on. <laughs> what the hell is that? But I'm not a, yeah, I'm not a lesbian. Yeah, I'm be not yourself. A, be yourself. Be yeah. In other words, we want you to be a lesbian now. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, really, like, could you imagine, Derek, if Brady had come on this show at some point when we were regularly both on and we were the world's greatest tag Uh-oh. team? And there was a commercial break and he had said, hey, guys, Uh-oh. Um, I need you to be yourselves. And also, I need you two to be lesbians. Like that would, <laughs> yeah, right. We could throw off everything. Go. Yeah, throw off everything. All right, yeah. All right, okay, Hicks. I guess we'll see what we can do. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, speaking of being yourself with little to no direction, I'm going to bring on Tora now. Uh, what's good. going on, Tora? Oh. What's going on? What's up? What? What's up? Uh, uh, what's up? Uh, 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 Ben Mudge is watching the hockey game. What's the hockey game? The Blues and the... The Blues and the Reds? Coyote. Coyote. I'm talking hockey. I'm about to you talking about the Reds. What you drinking tonight, girl? Soda. Yeah. Wow. Having a what do you got work tomorrow? <laughs> Think hard about that. Sorry, what, what what's going on, Tori? We'll toss Did you like the Royal question Rumble? Question next. <laughs> Did you like the Royal Rumble? Yeah, I watched the Royal Rumble. It was full of oh. crap. These, these fans would fold under questioning. Go ahead. <laughs> you, you, why'd you think it was full of crap? I thought it was full of good stuff. <laughs> well, beyond the ground, except for Goldberg, Belair wasn't supposed to win it. It was supposed to be really Ripley. What do you mean she wasn't supposed to? Would she go ahead and eliminate her even though she wasn't supposed to? She shot him right after her feet touched the floor. They said, "We don't oh, care that no, Bianca right. Belair's feet touched the floor." Because no, Bianca just shot on Rhea yeah, and won happen. anyway. That, that, that didn't happen. Yeah. That's... Look, let me tell you something. <laughs> I came on the show for months <laughs> and listened to you and all the callers praise that Finbot fin Alexa Bliss for months. I love her. After months. After I love month, her. After months. That's after a developed month. character. And now, that we have some fre- <laughs> and now we have some fresh blood that can actually yeah. wrestle. Imagine that. People want to say her foot touched the floor. You all have to hate it. How about is it? Is it is it couple of Hades? Is, is it not possible to like them both? I like them both. Ding dong, hello. I like them both. 
You can't like seasoned chicken and unseasoned chicken at the same time. It's a crime in most states, and it'll get you arrested. You can't like that. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to talk chicken, can we agree that the best chicken is barbecued chicken and that the best barbecued chicken is done with a sweeter Kansas City style sauce? You didn't get no argument from me. That's, I mean, I make my own sauce for the unseasoned chicken, so. That sounds really good, actually. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, bar- bar- barbecue barbecue <laughs> chicken's the best, bro. Sure. Barbecue, barbecue chicken is just the, the absolute plant. best. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, my God. You mix it with one. some cornbread? Oh, my cornbread. God, that's living. Yes. Oh, my oh that's God. living. Cornbread. Oh, mercy. <laughs> Careful, you're going you're gonna to manifest Rat Boy back on if you talk about cornbread too much. I think if... So, Tori, you... Tori, you didn't like the Royal Rumble because Bianca Belair wasn't supposed to win. How do you know she wasn't supposed to win? I feel like usually those things go according to plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, if, you, if you watch the uh, the whole thing, you know, you know that something is wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got you. So who should have won? Rhea Ripley. Mm. Rhea Ripley. Mm. I would have been all right with that, but I was happy that Bianca won because yeah, it you know. it makes sense. She's the one that they invested the time on the main roster. I, uh, to me, you don't just come in off NXT and win the Royal Rumble usually. I'm sure it'll happen now because I said that, but it's not. You're generally expecting somebody from one of the two brands. And you know what? It was very telling that the final two and the women's Royal uh, Rumble were two young faces from NXT, two brand new yeah. faces. <laughs> the men with Edge and Orton. <laughs> yeah. They could have been their fathers. The problem with the yeah. 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 That's what I said. That's what I said. Well, part of the problem is um, WWE's for a while now, they've been really deficient in I mean, they have the talent. Don't get me wrong. I think there's a, probably one of the most talented mm-hmm. rosters they've ever had. Um, but they're having a really hard time making those wrestlers resonate with fans. Mm-hmm. And that's why the ratings are down, and that's why people don't care generally. And that's also why they feel the need to bring in Goldberg and Edge and Shawn Michaels and Triple H at the drop of a hat because they don't have stars – that the fans can relate to by and large. Uh, they do for the women, I think, more than for the men. Um, but, and, yeah, that, so that, that's what they had to do. Because Edge could have had that storyline without having the title. Exactly. And, and it's crazy because if you watch SmackDown, SmackDown and Raw, they're like two different companies. It's like yeah. they're not the same company. They're, they're <laughs> right. completely different. And if you look at, if you look at SmackDown, they do a better job of that because you have Roman and you have Daniel Bryan and you have Sammy doing his conspiracy thing. Not <laughs> everybody's not the same. And it, He's basically me. Like in yeah. <laughs> it's wrestling in the golden era where everybody who was on TV, whether they were upper card, middle card, lower, they all had a reason to be on television. Mm-hmm. And that's what SmackDown feels like. Raw feels like they just grab a bunch of names out of the hat, throw them on TV, and go here. And that's it. And, 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 like, it, it, doesn't, it rarely has direction. I can't even imagine um, another seven months until the draft with three hours of the wrestlers that are all on Raw. they got to figure something out to change things up. It just... Like, Damian Priest is already on Raw, and I'm dreading the fact that these are the matchups that he's going to get, and then he's just going to get them over and over and over and over and over, and over again, like they did with Keith Lee. Yeah, it's tiring. Like, Tour, it's exhausting. Ricochet, Ricochet <laughs> spent all summer fighting the hurt business, and yeah, now Matt Riddle has spent pretty much what seems like all winter fighting the hurt business. Before that, right. Apollo Crews fighting them all, and nothing but changes. Like, yeah, it all stays the same. It's the same story with different faces. If um, you you know that uh, Mustafa Ali is going to be, uh, or Mustafa, I'm sorry, is it Mustafa or Mu- uh, Ali? I I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. I I know they pronounce it differently than I do, but then I get in Mustafa, trouble for calling. Da, 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 da. I call in, get in trouble for calling Kamala Harris Kamala Harris. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I um, yeah, he's going to be complaining about Kofi Kingston until Kofi Kingston comes back from injury. Like they went from there was a period in WWE right where they they threw everybody like they, they rushed everything all the time. Everything was always rushed. They would they would conclude feuds, starting conclude feuds on the same show. Um, now they drag things yeah. out for almost a year. It's the other extreme. Yeah. So keeping that in mind, if you think back a number of years ago, what is something that we all came on this show and we said we wanted WWE to do? Um. I I wanted the John Cena and Brie, and John Cena and Nikki Bella porn on the WWE network to spike numbers. Oh well, my that, God. That's Jesus different. Christ. That's, that's <laughs> okay. I don't, I, I don't I'm kidding. That's, that's disgusting. I'm kidding, guys. I'm that's kidding. Just sorry. Task. Oh Ray, why don't nah, you want to go on camera? Well, <laughs> here because I don't want my face attached to that ridiculous. Oh I'm sorry. That was uh, my yeah. my opinion, not not anybody yeah. else's. Yeah, dear God. Um, I'm dirty with it. Well, don't, well, don't, you know, continue going down okay. that rabbit hole, so to speak. <laughs> you know, the thing is. Thanks for the call, Tora. Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for telling us that you were watching <laughs> well, hockey, Tora. That really love you, Tora. Added a lot to this conversation. Love you, Tora. Um, we came on and said for years that we wanted to see right. WWE build longer feuds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're missing something, though. They're trying to build longer feuds now. The problem is that the, is that they're not doing anything in the middle. You're right. You're right. Mustafa yeah. Fafa Ali is. <laughs> right. He's he's going to complain about Kofi Kingston from now until Mr. whenever Fox. Kofi Kingston about yeah, Mr. Oh, that's what we're calling him from now on. He's going to come out and complain about Kofi Kingston from now until you know. Little K. Yeah, from Sorry. from now or Circle K or Special K, yeah. you know, <laughs> he's going to come out and complain about him from now until Kingston comes back. If you think back, you know, you think back to the a, a perfect counter a perfect counter to this because they run parallel is the Savage Steamboat angle, and yes, mm-hmm. that was that was always there, but in the meantime, Savage fought other people. He did yeah. other things. A long feud doesn't have to be the only feud. Yeah. And I'm sure that there's people in WWE Creative, and if you're listening, to pl- take, take this under advice, because clearly you people don't know how to write anything. A character's arc does not have to follow a straight line. Nor do the events at the beginning of the arc necessarily need to be present throughout the entire arc. A character can begin one way, develop over the course of a story, and conclude at the place where they started with a different ending and a different perspective. That's what gives you your payoff. It also gives them depth. That's isn't yeah. that, and isn't that crazy how that works? That yeah. by having yeah. a character experience multiple things and going through a variety of drawn of drawn out prolonged experiences that have a variety of twists, turns, and outcomes, that it creates depth of character and therefore an emotional investment on the part of us, the audience. That's ridiculous how that works. So you know, somebody <laughs> get somebody get me into that creative room. Well, all, all kidding aside, though, like I mean. Uh, Derek, uh, like Bobby the Brain Heenan, one of the things that was amazing about this guy um, is that he had his hands in almost every single angle. You know, like he he had one guy feuding against this guy, and he would also at the same time be feuding against this guy. He'd have his own feud. Uh, his tag team would have, and he was like he was like he was coming out sometimes six, seven times on the show. In addition to doing commentary, it was crazy. Um, but. Yeah. It just yeah. showed you like how involved somebody could be. And like your direction doesn't have to be like Ricochet doesn't have to focus solely on Mustafa Ali. You, you can go in a bunch of different directions and still kind of circle back to that overarching angle. But that doesn't mean that that's always got to be 
the one-on-one match every week. Brady got the name right. And, like, yeah. And, did I? Did oh, yeah. I? Oh, that was an accident. <laughs> but it's it's like one of my favorite storylines of all time is Brett and Owen, right? Brett yeah. and Owen starts a Survivor Series, Owen being jealous. Then they get back together. You know, they lose to the Quebecers. Brett refuses to tag Owen. Owen turns on Brett. Brett beats Owen at Mania. Owen right? told the Brett truth the whole time, by the way. He did. Yeah, he did. It was nothing. Which was awesome. Brett was selfish. He was never, he was never wrong about it. Brett was yeah. selfish. And, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, <laughs> Brett beats him at Mania. Brett wins the world title. They don't automatically go into Brett and Owen at the next pay-per-view. No, Owen goes on to win the King in the Ring. Brett goes on to have another feud. And then eventually they come back together for the cage match. And they have the yeah. match. You see what I'm yeah. saying? They, they didn't fight the whole time between Survivor Series and SummerSlam. Right. Like Ray said, you can have... Ebbs and flows, you know. And then when it finally ended, it ended with Owen joined Brett and the Hart Foundation three, four years later. And it all came back full circle. And it's like I don't know if they don't they're not able to write these stories because you have T V writers and T V writing and wrestling writing is not the same thing. I think that's part of it. Some wrestling voices who needs wrestling voices in there because it's like he used to be amazing at telling stories and now they suck. They're all terrible. I think if I, I Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think if they produced Raw and SmackDown more like how they did house shows, but with random interviews and segments backstage produced by the producers, uh, and by producers, I mean guys that were actually in-ring stars, um, I just think small changes like that would pay immediate dividends and make the uh, the wrestlers in the company infinitely um, more relatable to the fans. Just my opinion. I, then I don't know what you would need all those expensive writers for, but um, I, I think if you were to just kind of have a focus on matches and and a focus on well produced backstage things, um, I think it would be a lot better off. Oh, I think you're definitely right, and yeah. have it so. I think that's the first step that, that it's twofold. Number one, you need wrestling voices in those discussions because those people are going to know what it is going to take to develop something in wrestling, which is its own unique field. You know, I understand writing and character development and plot development, but I am not a wrestler. And so there are things that, you know, that Stro can, could give me that I wouldn't necessarily know or that I wouldn't necessarily have the perspective of. The other thing is that you need, you guys are right. I think, I think you, you need fewer TV writers. You need some short story authors in there. Choose your own adventure. No, maybe not. (laughs) Maybe not choose your own adventure, but certainly yeah, in that, that vein. Yeah, you, but you need some you need some <laughs> short story writers in there to to pull the TV yeah. writers back and say, "Look, guys, yeah. you are trying to create a self contained. You are trying to create a self contained story. 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 You are trying to create a self contained story within an anthology of connected <laughs> stories, and that's not an easy thing to do. There's you're, you're asking, you are asking the wrestling writers to create every year to create a new copy of the Canterbury Tales. And there's a reason that that's considered to be such a literary classic, but you can't do it with just TV writers. It takes multiple different types of writing and multiple different understandings of how plot and character development work. And it's pretty obvious right now that WWE does not have a complementary stable of those people helping develop their product. Yeah, the Canterbury Tales always reminds me of Cranberry. I don't know why. Well, it's because uh, uh, you have the after the Miller's Tale and the Reeves Tale, you have the Ocean Sprayer's Tale, and that's <laughs> yes, exactly. That's uh, that's why it always reminds you of that. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Let's uh, speaking of speaking of being all over the place. Uh, we're going to bring on Justin. Uh, by the way, nine one four three three eight eighteen eighty five is the number to uh, to call in if you guys want to join us. Uh, but what's going on, Justin? How you doing, man? Uh, uh, not much. You all right? Yeah, I'm He's fine. been abducted by a ghost. Yeah, just keep him. 
keeping myself and all. Keeping yourself what? And, uh, try, keeping to myself, just trying to edit some of my videos and from the last investigations and all that good stuff. How's that coming? I, I haven't. We haven't talked ghost hunting in a while. I, I got away from it a little bit. Would you say oh, it's going, you ghosted it's going it? Well. No, it's going well. I'm doing uh got a another one coming up on the twenty sixth at the beeping, so that should be fun. Now do you think when it's aliens shine thing. their light, do you think it's really just them trying to communicate? Uh, uh, that could be rap could be rapidly flying in as little flying saucers. But that knows. could be. <laughs> could be you. You look like Thank you stepped you. right off a saucer. Uh, I might have. <laughs> I appreciate the kind words. Oh, of course. It's okay. I, I just mean because your eyes are big and the green skin. That that was all I meant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Ollie. Eyes are See, huge. Exactly. Now, you, you know, it's more like a long face, not so much the eyes are big. You know, it's more like a, like a, like, 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 like a face, like a candy corn kind of. Oh my god! I'm kidding, dude. I'm kidding. I'm just having fun. With you. Uh, it's all good. Yeah, I know. It's okay. I, <laughs> it's okay. My face looks like a. <laughs> I was gonna say Rolo, but that wouldn't be right. I, I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's it's like scary. a peanut butter cup. It's, it's pretty scary. Thank I you. I don't want to comment on that one. <laughs> I know. Uh, if I comment something mean and nasty, you'll end up being like, "Hey, don't be saying that." But no, no, no. It's only when you use the f word and the n word that I don't like it. I don't use. I'm, I've been. I've been. I've been good. I haven't. I haven't you have been. You've been, I've been bad. You've been good. I've been. Yeah. I've been minding my. I've been keeping myself. Changing my. Keeping your no. minding your f's and, and n's. <laughs> You guys see, uh, Royal Derek, Rumble. you have the power to end this. <laughs> I, 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 I know. I, wait, this isn't that bad. I, I saw the Royal Rumble. Did you watch it, Justin? No. I watched it. I watched it. I watched it all. Were uh, you a fan? Uh, up until the, I watched it all the way up until the men. And then I just, and I was like, hey, you know what? I'm bored. So I fell asleep right through, right through the uh, Royal Rumble. And I was like, my God, WWE cannot. It's the same. It's almost like the same thing. What bring do you mean? Back the old has been Edge, bringing back Edge, uh, just so they can have one more run. And I'm like, oh my God, Did I see this has been fight. Oh, come on now, I don't see him fight. That stupid comedian. Jesus. All right, so you're yeah, not an Edge fan. Captain Christian. You got to be a Bianca Belair fan, right? Or Edge and Christian, yeah, like that's yeah. exciting. Yeah, uh, yeah, that yeah, was a good match. I was, I was, I was okay with that one. But, I was thinking, I was thinking on Raw they should do, they should do a, um, what do you call it? Like a beat the clock challenge with Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. Whoever can beat Goldberg the fastest wins the match. Oh, at least Bill alone. That, that match was. That match was. I don't think that match led up to all the hype that it, that it brought in. It's very well good. Especially when you had uh, the fake Goldberg and then you had the fake Drew McIntyre coming out. I was like, right. I, music, I was like, I, I was all psyched up. I was like, yeah, the real guys are going to come out and say these are knockoffs. I was like, oh, come on now. You think it's going to be really good and then it's not? Yeah, I thought it was really good. I was been ready to. Yell and scream and all that. And I was like, "Ah, oh, come on now! Thank you, WWE. You got me hyped up, and you psyched me out." So, so Justin, what are some things you enjoy? Ghosts. What are some things I enjoy? Yeah. Ghost. Ghost. Ghost hunting. Okay. The, uh, Burger wrestling, King. Wrestling when it's not wrestling when it's not so sucky nowadays. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, I, now I don't even go to Burger King no more. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Okay, so to be clear, you weren't able to save that Burger King franchise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
we we really tried to get the word out there virally, but it just didn't seem to catch on. It did not take on. It did not take on. Ah, oh, Justin. I even got I even got tired of fast food with uh, six years, and I was just like, hell with it. I'm not doing this anymore. He, here's my impression of you, Justin, and I've never met you. I think you like fast beer. I think you like fast drugs, and I think you like fast women. Does that sound pretty accurate? Oh. Uh, the hell is fast well, drugs? You were saying you were saying you were saying, like drive down fast beer. <laughs> Advil. Oh, okay. I, I do. I, I I do like my beer though. You like your beer? What's your beer of choice? You wait. Let me guess. I um, I guess that you would be uh, golden anniversary where every can is a celebration. I think Justin well, no, likes. A, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let, let's all take a guess. Yeah, we're gonna guess first. now. We'll, we'll take a guess. Let's all take a guess first. I Whoever think, gets the closest without I going think, over. I think Justin. Uh, I think Justin is an old Milwaukee man. I could see that. Derek, you have, you have a guess for his beer? Uh, he has tattoos, right? Yeah, well, of course, yeah. Oh, Miller Lite. He's Light. from Virginia. Bud Light. He's from Virginia. Bud Light. Bud Light. He's not, Bud Light. not from. Uh, you're not? Yeah, you're from Virginia, aren't you? Oh, no, you're from Pennsylvania. No, no I, was, I was born oh, in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay, but yeah, where did you get your tattoos? In Pennsylvania or Virginia? Virginia uh, most of them were done in Pennsylvania that I did. I started, okay, I got it. I started putting more out. I, I don't want to leave Stro out of this. Stro, do you have a pick for what his beer would be? Wait, Derek, did I cut I you no off? Idea. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Derek, did I cut you off? Did you give a beer? I'm sorry. I might have interrupted you with my yeah, nonsense. Once you said, I was, I was, I was going to say Bud Light, but once you said Bud Light. Pennsylvania, I went uh, Blue Moon. <laughs> Blue Moon. It could have been Yingling too. Yingling, that's another. Just that's just another one. Just around sacks of oranges everywhere for his blue. <laughs> <laughs> what's your beer? What's your beer? Uh, can I change mine? I don't like golden apples. That, that was a joke. No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't hear uh, Strohs. Sharks. Sharks. Oh. Yeah, and I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna go with. Uh, did anyone say Miller Genuine? No. Don't, please do don't that. insult me like that, Brady. Okay, fine. You guessed Miller Genuine. Wait, you, you had that? You, Did I'll you have that? Spirit. No, I, I know. I guess I think Justin's an old Milwaukee man. Although, That's given that he's from Milwaukee. Pennsylvania, I, yeah. I could. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take like a secondary. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Like, I'm gonna blackjack. I'm gonna split my queens. Um, it <laughs> might be Keystone. Easton. Hurry up, tell you. Hurry up, tell you. All right, guys, I'll tell you. To break, to break it all to you, you guys are all wrong. My beer of choice is Devil's Backwood Vienna Lager. Devil's oh, Backwood. yeah. Shoot, that was going to be my third guess. And Stro, you actually messaged yeah, me. I... And you had said, ah, if only I had guessed, yeah, Devil... if only I had guessed Devil's Backwood Vienna Lager. Yeah. Oh, bummer. No, Devil's Backbone. Oh, That's Devil's Backbone, not Devil's Backwoods. All right. Devil's not Devil's right. Backwater. <laughs> Devil's not back. Devil's Backwater. <laughs> Devil's Backbone. Oh, man. Oh, we were all so close. I love it. I still, it. Think, I I love still it. think my old Maybe. Milwaukee guess was solid. I do, I do have an old Milwaukee here and there, but my primary is Devil's Backbone. Of course you do. The old Milwaukee's your chaser. Yeah, whatever. Dad, I right, if I go back home, I drink mm-hmm. a beer from up home mm-hmm. here and there. <laughs> All right, brother. Uh, so, so you didn't like the Royal Rumble? You didn't really care for it? Uh, I thought you were off wrestling. Yeah, I so mean, it, it's refreshing to hear that you're back. It was, it's a little bit. It's about a. It's about a fifty-fifty. Fifty-fifty. The women were better than 50/50. the men. Can we agree on that? Yeah, I can yeah. say that. Women were amazing. And I'm so happy for Lisa Marie, by the way, uh, because when we had her on the show a couple of years ago, she sounded like she didn't ever expect to be back anywhere. Yeah. And she really yeah, legitimately like sounded. Like yeah. Yeah, I saw an interview with her afterwards, and she was like, moved to tears. So I was like, well, good for you. Well, yeah. 
it never made sense to me. All the women that they bring back that they couldn't use her for something like this. Even if like, and I I don't know all the nuances of why she hasn't been back. Really, I I I've heard stories, and I don't really want to comment on stuff that I don't really know. And she didn't really get into it, but um, I always yeah. felt like you could still bring her back for shows like this, even if you don't want it to be a regular thing. Um, there's still opportunities there. I mean, they brought back Melina for nothing. God's sakes. Like, I know. <laughs> yeah. Enough and nothing. They need, like we were talking about creators. It'd be nice to have a woman who actually wrestled in the creative room. Because some of these storylines they give these girls, like, Oh, man. I'm watching Brady beat him ah. a penguin. Well, I'm, I'm wrestling a penguin. <laughs> yeah. For entertainment. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's well, Brady. You've definitely managed to you uh, definitely managed to to cool this show down by about oh two hundred and seventy three degrees Kelvin. Did our host just mute himself? He sure did. <laughs> well, now it's the Stro and Ray show. Stro, yeah. what do you? Where do you think the WWE moves forward creatively if it's going to do the best by its stars? Ah, uh, well, I mean, why did that mute? I didn't even touch it. That's weird. Go ahead. Brady, you've been ejected from the show. I'm interviewing Stro now. Stro, Why? You saying? All right, I'll just wrestle this penguin while we're... <laughs> we'll work a spirited five-minute match. <laughs> oh, Go ahead. Don't let me interrupt you. Mm. Go ahead. That was a rough bump. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is the kind of stuff you can only get on the video channel. VOC Nation on YouTube. <laughs> was that 10? I wasn't even counting. By the way, I still love it. Um, and, and I hope to God Sheamus isn't the guy that fights Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania uh, because that would be horrible. That would be absolutely horrible. But I still love it when Sheamus takes a guy – uh, exposes his bare chest and then just beats on him until he wants to stop. I think it's amazing. <laughs> That's almost as good as the giant swing. Oh, I love a good giant swing. <laughs> and I love that when he did it to Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan kind of put his hands behind his head like he's laying in a hammock and just enjoyed yeah. the ride. It's exactly what it is. You can see the guys do it right away. Uh, I'm sure part of it was because he swing and then he wanted to make sure no one hit his head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was cool though it was very cool that was actually I, I love the fact that Cesaro is back to using that um, <laughs> but all kidding aside um, I don't know who Drew McIntyre is going to face at Wrestlemania now if Edge takes on Roman Reigns which I think is the logical thing to do um, yeah it makes the most sense yeah it does it, and you know what else like I'm, you can't even, like, if you put Edge in there against Drew McIntyre, it's like you can't win. Because, like, if Edge wins, yeah. then you're burying McIntyre. And if, like, Edge wins, mm -hmm. then, I'm sorry, if McIntyre wins, then you're, like, you're killing the, the whole angle in a way. Yeah. But, like, if you do it against Roman, it's like there's a lot of different ways they can go. You know, Roman can kind of cheat him out of it. Um, Roman can mm -hmm. lose to Edge, and because he's a heel, it doesn't really matter. He'll just be able to come back and challenge him again later. Um, there, there's a lot of different ways they can go with it. Um, but poor Drew, who they spent so much time investing in, it's like I, I'm afraid it's going to be Sheamus. I don't see who else they have him wrestle. I, uh, who's the top heel on that? I guess the top heel is, is Orton and Lashley, Orton. right? Yeah, oh, Lashley. They could yeah, do Lashley. I was thinking that. I get, yeah. I they could take the butt off Lashley and they could do him. 
But, we'll um, do title for title. It's, yeah, they they have to do something. I, it's amazing how they've managed to botch the building up a character. And then if you if you look on on SmackDown, like you said before, Roman before Ed showed up, he could have he had Daniel Bryan, he had Kevin Owens. They built, you know, they're pushing Nakamura, they're Cesaro. There's so many guys they could have placed in there with Roman. And poor Drew, he has nobody. You don't think it's going to be Miz, do you? No, I don't. Oh, I don't. Here's I, here's what's amazing okay. about about this corner that they've painted themselves into. Uh, all right, yeah. so let's so let's take the idea of title for title. So if they do title for title, that's your WrestleMania main event, right? Mm-hmm. So you're telling me that that Lash that Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre closes your WrestleMania. But mm-hmm. Edge versus Roman Reigns is somehow further down on the card. I know, I know. <laughs> That's such a Edge re- and Roman will be the main. That's such a you don't know. Well, Once you if you're doing title for title, that has to be your main event. No, it's the U.S. title. Yeah, that don't matter. That don't matter. They're doing they're doing they're doing two nights, right? So technically, you need two main events. Oh That's yeah. Cool. That's right, and we know the women aren't going to main event it this year because <laughs> you know no Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? yeah, now that they don't have the 10th or 12th most talented woman on their roster, you know, the women can't make that. God forbid. Exactly. God forbid, God forbid, you know, you know, well, Becky's not back yet, really. So, um, no. Yeah. So, like, you know, you know, you God know. for God forbid they do a live more. God forbid they build Liv Morgan and have Liv go against. Uh, why, why am I suddenly blanking on the name? Um, well, I can't remember her name. This is not good. Oscar. So, no, why? God forbid! God forbid they have Liv Morgan against Sasha Banks. Oh yeah. God, God, no, God, for, I mean, God they forbid they build Liv Mor- God forbid they build Liv Morgan and make the and, and make that a title match. They dear, they could I, I, put the snark aside for a second, Derek. Uh, they could do Asuka versus Alexa. But Alexa is like a cartoon character now, so her match she is, is. going to have to be like. Yeah, I mean, they could have Oscar finally end all that nonsense. Her. It'll probably be Charlotte and Oscar. You know what but... was? You know what was funny about the women's rumble I like to bring up when yeah. Alexa Bliss was getting ready to change, and they also had come in, so they threw her out the ring before she could change. That was yeah. funny because that, that was funny. Just having common sense, <laughs> but. Talking about Drew. They didn't just uh, paralyze with fear. <laughs> I know. When, when you think about Drew, it makes it, it's kind of angering that they took him and AJ Styles, who had never had a match before, and made it a throwaway TLC match. And it's yeah. like, you could have saved that for Mania. If right. They built AJ back up, and they could have had a great match, and they just threw it away at a random December pay per view. I was thinking that too. It's. it's so like it, like it, the, the whole ladies the, old age. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm gonna say it's he built Warrior up for a year mm-hmm. leading into the Mania match with Hogan. Mm-hmm. You know, you're talking about Yoko. Look how he built Yoko up leading to his match with Bret Hart. Uh, they, like he would build guys up specifically for WrestleMania, and now it's like he has to. You know, go through all the names and see what we can try to make feel important. I, myself, I, mean, it's I, I think it's because back in the day, Vince actually had wrestlers in his ear. And today, he yeah. just listens to writing teams. And they have the agents work on the quality of the matches, and the quality of the matches is never an issue. Um, but but yeah. that the planning and the direction of it is just a mess at times. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say uh, AJ Styles. Like you mentioned AJ Styles. And I was thinking that like they burned through that in December. I think I even said it at the time. Like that's your mania match. I don't know why you do that. You did. It, it, sh- mm-hmm. uh, it should have either been AJ or Randy Orton against Drew. They should have kept them apart until mania and have that be the match. I, I would have been fine with either one of them. But really, if you take AJ Styles and you put him in, 1990, in 1995 or 1996, uh, he's right there with Shawn Michaels mm-hmm. and Bret Hart. But today, yep. with the mess that it is, he's nothing. He has almost no value uh, unless they need something 
for everybody to chuckle at, or they need somebody to deliver like a, a really great match. And it's a shame. It, it is a damn shame. Yeah, uh, because to me, AJ Styles is probably, um, all kidding aside, I think he's the most developed character uh, aside from Roman Reigns. Yeah, I, I had saw somewhere where somebody said, and Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles, Vince has his modern day Sean, his modern day Brett, and he doesn't treat either one of them like he treated Brett and Sean during the nineties. Yeah, that, that's a problem because you can put those guys in the ring with anybody, and they can have a great match. Like you said, yeah. you can tell AJ to be a comedy guy, you can tell Daniel Bryan to be a comedy guy, and they make it work. And it's almost like they're too good, so he takes advantage of them because of how good they are. Yeah, well, it's a damn parody booking. Get well, you every time. Yeah. It used to be, and you're right. No, you're right. That that that's kind of that's that that kind of segues into what I was going to say. It used to be that there were guys who were at the top of your card, and sometimes it was because of talent, uh, and because they could, you could use them anywhere, like Savage. Or it was because they just happened to catch lightning in a bottle like Hogan, and then you know have the have the know how to sustain it. Um, yeah. But there were guys at the top of the card, and there were guys who you know floated somewhere in the middle, some closer to the top than others, some closer to the bottom than others. And you used to have guys that were just bottom feeders, and mm -hmm. that was okay. And the problem that, you know, they tried it with Heath Slater for a while, but you can't just have one bottom feeder. No. You know, yeah. the, a lake does not sustain itself with only one snail. It just doesn't. Like, you have to, you have, to have a lot. And I realize <laughs> an I just called Heath, analogy. <laughs> I realize I just called Heath Slater a snail, which is just a <laughs> terrible <laughs> insult. But, like, you can't. Well, yeah, Brett Myers with him too. Well, yeah. it wasn't just him. But like, you have to, <laughs> you have to have a variety of people at all parts of the card, and they have to have their roles. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it, it was, you know, it, it used to be okay that the Red Rooster would lose all the damn time. Mm -hmm. It was fine. It didn't affect him at all. Yeah. Look at Sam, yeah, look at Santino. Santino was one of their most beloved characters. He didn't win every match. He didn't win any he matches. Played, it's hard truth, you know. <laughs> yeah, he, he does, and he, he plays it, but he played his role. They have like Billy Kay. Billy Kay could play that role for them. She's so she's so entertaining. <laughs> she's funny. That they could use her, <laughs> and and they it's like they use her in bits and pieces, and when it starts to be good. It's like Vince goes, no, 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 it's too much of a, and he takes it off TV. It's you like, know, no, doing something that's working. It, it's funny it, it, because like, I was thinking about this uh, on Sunday night, like watching her, like um, they want so badly for Peyton Royce to be the star from that team. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they want it almost to like a detriment because Billy Kay is clearly like about there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, she she's uh, Peyton Royce. You, you can tell. I don't know. It's just it's different. You know, Peyton Royce gets taken more seriously, and it's like I know she's got that comedic aspect to her, and that's great. But I feel like Billy Kay has just about put it all together since she's been apart. Yeah. And I think it's a shame that she's not really doing anything. And and everything she touches works. When, when I saw her yeah. in there with Jillian Hall, and they yeah. were doing, I, was like, I wouldn't mind doing funny. TV every week because it'd, be yeah. it'd be entertaining. You know, when Shotzi shot her, you know, shot her portfolio with her with her tank. It's like stuff like everything they did for the team, <laughs> she makes right. it great. And they just, they just refused to, to push her. And it's like, oh, that's sad. Because if this was 20 years ago, Vince would probably see that and go, let's put her on TV she makes she's gold whatever we give her. And now it's like you get punished for being too good if you're not one of Vince's favorites. If nothing else, she would like have some guy that she manages, you know, and she would take him right to yeah, the top. Definitely. You just it's not there anymore. It's a shame. They because the talent is there. Like I said, I feel like every every week that they don't make it better, 
is like a squandered opportunity in a way. And that, that is a shame um, because I think, um, Stro, I don't want to sound like I have an ego, but I feel like I could take half of this roster and create a better show than what they were doing in the early nineties. <laughs> Good luck. With just, with just half the <laughs> roster. Yeah. I mean, let me, let me pick half the roster that I would take. And I think I could, I really yeah. do. I'm really, I'm really good at the 2K games, so I, I have to assume that I'd be able to. I, w- I would love to see how that turned out, really. Um, <laughs> I really would. I think I'd be a fun booker. You know what? Some, someday, maybe. Someday. I got, got a lot of irons in the fire, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll have a VOC Nation promotion. How amazing would that be? Oh, wow. Can you oh. imagine? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. Going to be out there giving guys stunners, Brady? <laughs> no. No, Brady's definitely – well, Brady's got to be behind the scenes, so he's got to be kind of down in the gorilla position seconds. as the interviewer. Um, I, I, would be, I, I would be like Vince McMahon at the desk. I, uh, what better way to get your talent over? That's true. That's true. He was smart when he did I was that. always that a was fan of that. Like that. Well, I suppose, but then who does – which of us does the commentary with you? Because you don't want a three-man booth. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> I'll flesh it out. I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> 60 I mean, I seconds. Because he could actually be the color and actually tell what the guys are doing in the ring. He, he That's true. That does make the most sense. That's true. Yeah. Derek, I guess you and I have to be managers. I did, oh. commentary, with Kat, I did commentary with Kathy before, and she just giggled the whole time, so I don't think that would work. <laughs> I'm kidding, <laughs> Kathy. I'm kidding, Kathy. Uh, hey, Derek, you and I can. You, you, guys, I can you guys be managers. Good managers. Yeah. Um, so I well, you guys this, are going to be workers. Like old time managers. You guys yeah, are going to be the world's greatest managers. tag team. I'm going to be yeah. more like I'm going to be more like I Classy Freddie Blassie. Um, I was going to book you as Ray Fuji. No, 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 no. I'm more like I'm more like Blassie, <laughs> and I think. <laughs> And then, and then Derek. <laughs> see, I see Derek as a Bobby the Brain. I can see that. I like it. Yeah, I can yeah. see Derek as a Bobby. Like so I had. Hmm? I was going to say, I used to love how they used to, they used to trade talent. So, like, Fuji would sell a contract to Hino, and then Hino would sell a contract to Slick. They were always yes. together. Yeah. That was oh, good. man. Yeah. That was great like, stuff. Like, like, I remember. Uh, Jimmy Hart doing an interview talking about um, how he sold King Kong Bundy to Bobby Heenan. And it was like one of the worst trades he ever made because King Kong went or King, uh, King Kong Bundy went on to like main event WrestleMania, you know, and Jimmy Hart. (laughs) (laughs) When Jimmy Hart left the Hart Foundation and stole all that money. Yeah. He was going crazy. (laughs) Yeah. I was a big fan of when uh, the big boss man and Akeem broke up with Slick. Well, actually, I guess it was the big boss man broke away, and then, then uh, the whole million dollar belt and the snake bag and all that stuff. That the, the whole thing was just amazing. Yeah, yeah. That, that that time period. The boss man was he was perfectly fine getting the belt back until you found out Slick did it for money. And they were like, "Oh, wait a minute!" <laughs> and he didn't get any money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that's the kind of stuff they just don't do today. It's just not there. It's so easy to. It's not hard. It is. It's little things like that. Yeah. Instead, they just rely on pop culture references that alienate half your audience and uh, honestly don't have much to do with anything. It almost comes off like name name dropping. Yeah. Not a fan. It does. It does. Yeah. You think if if we did the if we did our own promotion, you think we could get Virgil? Is he doing anything these days? Oh, you, I mean, yeah. you know, you know, you could. You got to pay him. You got to pay the booking fee. No, I think we just give him like a hot meal. <laughs> and tell him to bring his merch table. Yeah, bring, it, bring the merch table. With you. <laughs> well, I think he would anyway. I don't even think he would ask. Yeah, it would just yeah, be you there. wouldn't have to ask. He'd have it here. Yeah, now, I feel like he probably would want to be your champion too, but I think we could work with that creatively. Here's what I think we do. 
<laughs> I think I think we don't say anything. But if he just brings his merch table, like you know, like un, uninvited, I think that we have a match set to put. I think every match puts someone through the table, and like Virgil just keeps <laughs> rebuilding it. And every time, every time the next match, someone goes through it. God damn it! What table? I'll tell you what. You haven't li- you haven't lived until you've seen Virgil get kicked out of a bar because he brought his own Wawa hoagie. <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. That's awesome. It was amazing. I think Kathy was there for that. I know I was. <laughs> Kathy's so nice. She's probably the one that bought him the hoagie. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> or drove him to Wawa and then bought him the hoagie and then drove him back. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, and I could like, see that. probably gave him like very specific instructions, like do not bring the hoagie to the bar. Probably, and she probably went in and actually pressed the screen for him because he was helpless, too busy networking in the car. He dropped him off. When he got in there, he was like, "I'm, I'm a little shook. You think you can help me out? Fine, <laughs> don't bring it inside. Why don't you just <laughs> sell the million dollar in. belt, Virgil? <laughs> it's worth a million dollars." <laughs> You know, that, it keeps coming back to me. We did that convention a couple of years ago in Woodbury Heights, New Jersey. It was Stro, Kathy, myself, and Ratboy, and the table was right next to Virgil's table. And Virgil had the million-dollar belt, like, kind of positioned right in front. It was beautiful. And uh, Ratboy brought his cardboard rat trap title and tried to switch it out with Virgil, and I thought there was going to be a fist fight. Stro, did you not think there was going to be a fist fight there? Uh, he was not happy about Ratboy touching his title. <laughs> I'll, I'll get... <laughs> I remember Rat Boy uh, putting his card for his belt on Virgil's table and asking that he won a title shot. And Virgil, Virgil was laughing and said, Get that piece of ass off my table. Oh, my That's right. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that and he kept harassing New Jack. I said, "Stop, stop talking to New Jack, because yeah, it's going to come back to me. Like, he, like, he's my think... pet, you know. Yeah. Yeah. If my if my dog if my dog poops on New Jack's lawn, he's not coming after the dog. He's coming mm-hmm. after me. Yeah. The dog yeah. don't know yeah. any yeah. better. Who you with? Right, exactly. And then you know what he says? Oh, we got in the room. The OC Nation back corner." <laughs> You know that's the first thing he says. <laughs> wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. It's time for the morning after. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, Rat Boy, why did you do that to us? You could have gotten me killed. It's true. I'm sorry, but I had to do something. <laughs> you know I what I wanted to do? I wanted to get... I. I... <laughs> I think he just sits and listens. I wanted to get a uh, a children's pen, you know, like like you put like a like an infant in like a giant circular pen, and I wanted to just tell him, stay inside the pen behind our table. People can see you. That not unlike like the not the unlike zoo. like the old circuses back in the day. The zoo, <laughs> right? Exactly. Like people can come up, you see it. You don't necessarily go and pet the polar bears, you know. You you see them. I do. You know. Yeah. Please don't feed him because he'll follow you. Right. I mean, <laughs> the, the whole story, like how Rap Boy got started, uh, uh, Voice of Choice, his, his ex-wife told him, uh, don't let Rap Boy in the car with you. And he's driving to a convention, and, and he's going around the circle of the exit ramp, and he sees Rap Boy walking mm-hmm. on the side of the road toward the convention on the highway exit ramp. And, uh, and he stops and lets him in. And two wives later, for Bruce, uh, we're still here with Rat Boy. <laughs> so in a way, in a way, Bruce has invested more money in Rat Boy than he has in any of us. Uh, I suppose. I mean, he certainly is funding this gigantic operation here, so. True, true. Yeah. But like, think about it. Like, like think about it. Bruce has, <laughs> think about it. Bruce, because if he doesn't get divorced the first time, 
he can't get divorced mm-hmm. a second time. So the total cost of both divorces really is on Rat Boy. Well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, and Rat Boy's also to blame for Bruce going away for five years and leaving me to run the whole thing, um, which was the smaller years where we, we lived on a tight budget where only the blog talk was paid for, and uh, we did okay. But certainly things are a lot better now, Rat Boy. Uh, no thanks to you. <laughs> cool. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm just playing Rat Boy. <laughs> All right. Rat Boy, if, you fe- if you're feeling bad, just go get some free milk from 7-Eleven. Oh, yeah. I, I, have you gotten free milk lately? Oh, uh, not yet, because the 7-Eleven is closed right now. Why? Because they're closed did, did, did you drain them of milk? <laughs> no, the milk truck didn't come yet. I, I just picture him like knocking over the milk truck and like because they said he could have free milk, so he just assumes he can take the liberty of uh, destroying the milk truck to get yeah, us the milk before it goes that. in the store. You said I could have it. You said I could have it, didn't it? Now, when the milk truck comes, is it like oh, like I, 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 is it like a gas station where they bring the milk and they fill up the pumps? No, <laughs> I don't got no pumps uh, over here at the house. No pumps. It's just plain old seven eleven. Okay. All right. I'm uh, uh, amazed. Uh, I got three choices for, for Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. Three right. choices. One could be the Miz. Think about it. He's still got the belt. He's still got the briefcase. Oh. No, I don't want to mm. think about it. No, don't. Please don't and, make us think about that. Undertaker. That could be what they're thinking. That's no. not going to be the Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, the Miz. Okay. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Okay, how about, how about this one? The Super Bowl champ, Tom Brandy. Okay, you just like Brady. Uh, 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 <laughs> do you, do you, I love it. Thanks, Rat Boy. Uh, do, do you guys ever watch the league, like when the league was on? You remember that show on FX? Yeah. <laughs> that was an amazing show. It was about friends that played fantasy football together. And the one guy, I just remember him mm-hmm. going, uh, he, he accidentally drafted Tim Brady instead of Tom Brady. It was the most amazing thing. Tim Brady. <laughs> He's like, Tim Brady, mother. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right. Ray, you look like you went for a swim there. You all right? <laughs> He's delirious. <laughs> we drove him crazy. Okay, so... So, so, okay, so who's, who's, pray tell, who's your third option? It was Tom Brady. It was Tom, all oh, oh, Tom Brady. That some, Tom Brady. Here's what's amazing. Two amazing things from this call. No, I'm sorry, Tom Brandy. Tom Brandy. Okay, number one, two, two amazing things from That's this That's what call. he said. Number one, somehow, Tom Brady is the best of those three choices. Um, <laughs> And number two, he's the youngest number, of those three choices. To know, like, <laughs> <laughs> Miz is young. And, and number two, the most can, we, can we go back to the? Can we go back to the more disturbing thing here? What the hell? Seven Eleven isn't twenty four hours. I know. <laughs> I don't want to bring him back and ask him. Well, well, don't don't, don't do that. Him. But like, I mean, I'm yeah, maybe, maybe when it gets dark in Trenton, maybe they close. So. I mean, because I'm thinking even the. Even the um, our 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 West Coast version of Seven Eleven up the street that I'm going to go to after the show is over, even they're open till two and they just close from two to four. Like yeah. even if your Seven Eleven isn't twenty four hours, what the hell convenience store closes at eleven o'clock at night? It's not very convenient. <laughs> no, that's that's just a store. Back back to Tom Brandy. How how awesome would it be? To see him come in and like always cheat in his matches, you know, he could like loosen like the ropes one time, you know, he could like, <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be like, <laughs> Grox's his manager. He'd be like, he'd be, he'd be putting like, yeah, Gronk is his manager. He'd be like, um, using like, um, like ether. 
and like the corner post or whatever to like knock out his opponents, you know, but whatever he's got to do to win, basically the same as he does in football. You know, if he has to cheat, he has to cheat. Um, Cause he's the, he's the goat. He's the goat. All right. And then um, as, he gets, as he gets older, he'll, 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 surround, he'll surround himself with younger, great talent and he'll take all the credit for when they win. You know? Right. I'll, I'll <laughs> right. tell you what. That's how that works. <laughs> I don't with a care couple how, old friends. I don't care how the Super Bowl goes. Tom Brady will never be better than Warwick Dunn when it comes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Just Thanks. let me just go ahead and throw Absolutely that nice. out there right now. <laughs> I like Warwick Dunn. Who doesn't? Speedy little man. Picking up a car and throwing it out of anger. I, mean, I love the Warwick Dunn. That whole era. Derek Brooks, Warwick Dunn, Mike Allstott. John oh, Brown. they were amazing. Allstott, yeah. Yeah. Think about it. The that other one, uh, Lynch. Yeah. Go ahead. Didn't that collection of talent, the the that Super Bowl wasn't didn't didn't they get Brad Johnson a, a Super Bowl ring? Yes, <laughs> Brad just showed up to work every day. Yeah, he yeah. Just showed up and didn't throw interceptions. <laughs> Warren Sapp's another one. I thought Warren Sapp was amazing back in the. Oh day. yes. And he was a teammate of the Rock too. They were, so good. They were buddies. They were so good. Yeah. yeah, that was a painful year. The year that the a, Eagles were supposed to go to the Super Bowl, and Tampa Bay stepped in and said, "Oh, why not?" Yeah, but at least that was a legitimate Bucks team. Like, there's there was no well, yeah. shame in losing to that team. Well, and yeah, that tells a funny story. That tells a story where they all said Brad Johnson down at the beginning of the season and said, "Look, we only need you to score." 10 points a game, and we'll take care of the rest. <laughs> I mean, what a job to have as a quarterback. That's, amazing. That's basically what they did. Yeah. You know, I, even in, like, that NFC Championship game I was talking about, like, I think they had two or three defensive touchdowns. They did. It was it was ridiculous. Can, like, can you imagine – Freaking Rondé Barber. Can you imagine oh. being an NFL quarterback and having your defense sit you down and say, look, we got you. You just need to be better than Trent Dilfer. <laughs> yeah, just don't look into the space. Really? He's, like he's, he's like a reverse. He's like a yeah. No, I was gonna say he's like a reverse Drew Brees or uh, Aaron Rodgers for so many years. You know, yeah. Where they got to put up fifty yeah, points if yeah. they want to win. <laughs> and hope the defense can <laughs> and hope the defense can keep them under forty. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, like come on, buddy. Just yeah. one stop, please. One. <laughs> Well, that's the argument that Manning's better than Brady is that like, like, yeah, sure. I'd like, I would have liked to see Brady win with some of those Manning defenses too. Manning, opponents were scoring on the Colts before Manning sat down. Yeah. Yeah, he was already down 14 nothing. <laughs> like, what, how? There was like one playoff game where they were down 21 nothing before he got on the field because like they, they, I think it was like the, 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 the opposing team scored. Then like, they kicked it off, and I guess they re- returned it, or I, I don't know. They somehow got them to fumble it and returned it for the touchdown. I don't remember. It was crazy. It was maybe it was only four. Like I might be please, mistaken. Like please, like, the, the Bills played the Chiefs, and I had to I had to run to the aforementioned Seven Eleven, and they were winning nine nothing. Yeah. Seven Eleven. I come back. I, I see Josh Allen on the sideline looking sad, and I'm, I'm like, what, what happened? They're winning. <laughs> and my son goes, "No, it's twenty-one nine now." I'm like, "What? Yeah. Twenty-one nine? How?" I I ain't saying Kansas City is definitely going to win the game. I hope that they do, uh, but I I will say they, they, you don't sleep on Kansas City, man. They're oh. they're too good. They're no, they're too no, explosive. No. San Francisco no. learned that last year. Yeah. They score too fast. It's almost like they like being down so they can just throw the ball the first half. Yeah. 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 Good deal. Good. That is a solid deal. Good deal. Well, I, I, I think, um, I don't know if you guys had anything you wanted to add for this week. I, I, I feel like we've, uh, is the, the Super Bowl is, oh, is it this week? Yeah, it is. Yep. It is. I'm not watching. Wow. Yep. Yep. I mean, I'll watch it because I like Kansas City. I, I always have. Uh, people give me a hard time because I like them because you can't be a fan of two teams, but I, I always like them. Um, you know, but I, I honestly don't know what to expect. I, I am the second I say Kansas city is going to win, you know, 
Tim Brady's going to go crazy. So. <laughs> <He's gonna drink. laughs> yeah. I made the mistake earlier in the year of calling him the system goat, so. Yeah, can't do that, buddy. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. (laughs) I I have a soft spot in my heart for Kansas City because growing up, Derek Thomas was, like, one of my favorite players. Yes. Like, he was one of my favorite players. So I have a soft spot for Kansas City. I also think it's funny that when Andy Reid was in Philly, everybody in the league made fun of him and said he choked under pressure, and now everything he does. With the players. It's It's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> he 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 he, lo- he 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 won the lottery of the century by getting Mahomes because I don't even think, I know. Um, like I, he 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 positioned well to get him, but I think he just could have could have just as soon taken somebody else, you know. I think it's just the way yeah. it worked out. And that's amazing to go from Alex Smith to Patrick Mahomes. Well, yeah, holy moly! I know. That's not great. I know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I, the, yeah, good. Oh, I was gonna say, Sorry. I don't, I mean, you're not mad about Alex Smith. You're not, no. yeah, that's, that's no. winning the lottery. I don't know. I think, I think Andy Reid would be doing just as well if he had Deshaun Watson. I don't think that the talent level yeah. between Deshaun Watson and good Patrick team. Mahomes, I, I don't think, I don't think the talent level yeah. between them is, extraordinarily different. I think the difference is that Patrick Mahomes no. doesn't have an, it hasn't had an idiot coaching him. Exactly. Yeah. His team. Yeah. And, and they went out yeah. there. He's smart. Yeah. And they went out there and they gave him, you know, Tyreek Hill, who's probably the fastest human in this life. Whatever yeah. Football field. And, and, and the other, the other thing, travel. sorry. Mm-hmm. The, the other I'm thing right. that's to uh, Mahomes' benefit is that, um, or at least to Andy Reid's benefit, because he always had a problem with clock management, is Mahomes doesn't put him in positions where they have to waste uh, time trying to figure out what they're going to do because he'll just take charge and do it mm-hmm. if, if they're running short yeah. on time. And that's where – that's where because Donovan McNabb always had to wait for the next play to come in, and that that was what killed him on the Eagles every time. They'd be out of timeout sometimes with 10 Wait. minutes left in the game. I remember that. I, re- I remember that. And I'd be like, yeah. it's the third quarter. Where did they have to go? <laughs> yeah. They get stupid. The like, yep. we're, we're challenging some idiot play that, like, nobody would ever challenge, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I love the Chiefs. I always did. I, I liked them when uh, Joe Montana went there. And then somebody said to me, well, why weren't you just a 49ers fan then? And I didn't have an answer. I just thought it was cool that he could go there. And I, hate, I hate people who don't understand. You could be a fan of players who don't necessarily play for your team. Like I hate right. people who can't understand that concept. Yeah. Like, my buddy's growing up used to be like, like, Derek, you're supposed to hate the Eagles. How do you like Jeremiah Trotter? Like, cause he's awesome. That's why. Like, but Trotter is incredible. How do you, how do I like you know, I met Jeremiah like, Trotter at a yeah, subway, like the sandwich shop. Very in real life. <laughs> he <laughs> is, dude. He walked in, and I was like, I, I said to my buddy, I said, I know him from somewhere, and I, I don't know where, but and he was, he looked like he looked like Am, he looked like uh, like Amos, like he looked like uh, AJ Styles guy, um, just a big, tall, jack dude, and he came in with his little guy, you know, and it was just, it was, but as soon as the employee told me who he was, I, I, I had to go up and say hi, and he was amazing, but his hand was like, like his hand enveloped mine for a handshake. Like there was no, he could have easily yeah. broken my, he was a big dude. I always like, he used to do like interviews in the locker room. He'd like be post game interviews and like yeah. just his shirt, but it was still like he had on shoulder pads. It's like, yeah. Oh, man, why yeah. Is that big? And I remember like the year that, um, for non Eagles fans, it doesn't mean much, but like the year that, um, or I think it was two years that he was away from the Eagles. He left because uh, Andy Reid thought he was about done. And he left and he went to Washington. He signed a big deal. And this was before the days of social media. But he would, like, go on, like, blogs or do interviews or whatever, talking about how he was going to go McNabb hunting that weekend. Like, it was, like, the most amazing thing, you know? He was, like, he was talking trash oh my before there was social media. That's scary. <laughs> He's funny. Him James Harrison is legit scary. Him and James Harrison is still legit scary. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. 
Yeah. So anyway, um, I guess we'll see what the big game brings, but, uh, yeah. And it'll be weird too, without the stadium absolutely packed. Um, yeah, I think it's something like, yeah. uh, I think they said 25,000, which is going to be the same attendance for Armenia when they're there. They're going to have 25,000. <laughs> really? That's still a lot of people. It's just a shame. Know, it's, it's just a shame. Yeah, they really it should just let everyone. Let everyone in. Yeah. Yeah, I think they should have everybody bring, like, an important tax document and they could have a Super Shredder event at the Super Bowl. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> I apologize. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it, you know what? It'll it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting for sure. And and I'm excited to uh, to talk about WrestleMania more as we uh, you know continue to uh, work toward that. Um, Derek, did you have anything you wanted to plug for this week before we get out of here? Uh, no. Um, everybody, like I said, it's so good to be back. Uh, it's good to have you. More, so I should- I should be, I should be back to my normal schedule. Uh, Assuming it doesn't to, snow um, again, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. My my wife was like, "Oh, it might snow on Sunday." I said, "Well, I'm not going in. Uh, I'm going to be watching football." So they can see <laughs> good for you. But, good for um, you. Every, everybody enjoy the the Super Bowl. And yeah, I saw Edge is going to be on NXT. I saw Edge is going to be on NXT. I don't know what he's going to do there, but. If he's gonna, to, you know, watch Edge on NXT. He's, he's going to tease that he's challenging Finn Balor, probably. <laughs> yeah, but nobody believes. Yeah. <laughs> no. He'll probably fight him that night and win. Because mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> that's what they do. Uh, Ray, did you have anything you wanted to uh, to talk about on the way out? You know, not especially. Um, you know, um, I, I mean, I guess like a serious shout out to all the people who do uh, do the, the snow plowing and removal in the Midwest and the Northeast. I don't have to put up with it because I live five feet from the surface of the sun. And so it's not, it's, it's not a <laughs> I'm serious so jelly issue. about that. It's not yeah. a serious, it's because it's, it, I mean, it's not great in like June. Um, but while, while Derek was suffering um, uh, in, in the Midwest, they were, they were plowing too. And, um, props to whatever kid who knows if he's listening or not whatever kid was sent to plow my parents entire new housing division um, with no plow just a shovel by himself oh, for, like, boy. for like six oh, hours right. I guess people I had were to like, do my car and you would have thought I was like being like tortured I guess people were like inviting him in and like warming him up and feeding him because he was clearly going to get lost in the snow. It's pulled back. Amazing. Yes. Um, And uh, other than that, make sure you tune into the Stro Zone. I will be there. Uh, And Stro, what else do you have coming up? Uh, Well, Thursday night, WCW Retro, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Here on VirusNation.com. Um, the topic of discussion for Thursday night will be um, the greatest cruiserweights and junior heavyweights in wrestling. So please tune in for that. And oh. Friday night, Friday night good. on um, Stro Zone at midnight Eastern Standard Time, uh, my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Stro the Maestro, will be. Uh, the feature will be Phantom from Space from the 50s. So uh, please tune in for that as well. Oh. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, so anyway, thank you everybody for checking out In the Room tonight right here on VOC Nation. Of course, we'll be back next week, same time, uh, 9 Eastern. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube if you haven't yet. VOC Nation on YouTube. Just go check it out. Uh, In the Room and Wrestling with History, both uploaded there. Uh, I'll be coming back out. ECWA, two big shows, one in April. And then uh, that is a night of unusual matches. And then in May, the Super 8 tournament, the 24th edition returns. Uh, MMA star Matt Mikowski will join Ricky Morton, actually. Ricky Morton going to be part of Super 8 this year. Isn't that going to be amazing? I, um, I'm really hoping we can get Ricky on the show to talk about it. Um, because I, I, it's cool. It's just different. You know, I, I like that kind of stuff. I like... You know, when it's somebody different, uh, so that'll be fun. I, I think mm-hmm. Jerry Lynn was, um, before, was previously the oldest person to win Super 8, and he was in, like, his early 40s. I would imagine 
Uh, Ricky's got to be in his 50s, right? I would think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at least. <laughs> yeah. Sure, what do you think? Ricky Morton, he got a shot in the Super 8? As good as any. Rick, Ricky never ceases to amaze me, man. He's just, uh, it he's is like energy, amazing to me. He's the Energizer Bunny, man. He just keeps going. <laughs> he is. He's got more energy than me, that's for sure. Wasn't he on AEW doing like Canadian Destroyers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I thought he was done 10 years ago when he was feuding with Kevin Nash, but never say never, man. That's incredible. Uh, so tickets and information for that event, uh, ecwarrestling.com, and we'll be sure to talk more Super 8 in the coming days and weeks. Uh, don't forget to check us out on all forms of social media. Uh, don't forget to go to vocnation.com and check out all the great stuff uh, each and every day of the week, live and on-demand content uh, for all of you guys. Uh, in my opinion, it's the greatest collection of uh, talent that you could ever assemble. Uh, so be sure to check that out at vocnation.com. Thank you to the cast and crew of In the Room. Thank you to Stro, to Kathy, to Derek, to Ray, to Matt. Uh, thank you to all the callers. You guys make it fun. You mix it up. And I couldn't be happier with the whole thing. Everybody take care. Have a great week. And uh, enjoy the Super Bowl. And be glad if you shovel down. If not, you got a lot of work ahead of you right now. All right. Take care, everybody. Yep. Be safe. Love you all. Bye-bye.